call the meeting to order. Today is Wednesday, June 15th, 2022. This is the Monroe Township Board of Education meeting. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mrs. Tagliaferra, can we have a roll call, please? Ms. Arminio? I am here. <laughs> Ms. Belko? Here. Ms. Bierman? Here. Ms. Bora? Here. Mr. Chiarella? Here. Ms. Fabiano? Here. Mr. Nikotinsky? Here. Ms. Ratner? Here. Mr. Rutsky? Here. Ms. Kirby? Here. Madam President, you have a quorum. Thank you. In accordance with the provisions of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law, the Monroe Township Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published and electronic notice provided by having the date, time, and place thereof posted June 10, 2022 at all schools on the district website at monroe.k12.nj.us, published in the Home News Tribune and published in the Cranberry Press, and filed with the clerk of the municipality. Great, thank you. Our next item on the agenda is the approval of our minutes. We have first a public board of education meeting minutes for April 25th, 2022. Can I get a motion? Motion. Second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Any opposed? I abstain. Abstain. Any recusals? Okay. Our next one is the minutes for the closed session meeting, April 25th, 2022. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Are there any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any uh, opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Abstain. Mr. Um, Rutsky abstains. Any recusals? All right. The next one is for the special Board of Education meeting on May 5th, 2022. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion. Oh, second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Okay, Ms. Ratner abstains. Any recusals? Okay, our next one is our closed session meeting for, oh, wait, we did, no, the closed session meeting for May 5th, 2022. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Recusals? Okay. Our next is the Public Board of Education meeting for May 11th, 2022. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion. motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Abstentions? Recusals? Okay. A closed session meeting May 11th, 2022. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? Recusals? <coughs> Closed session meeting on May 19th, 2022. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Recusals? I recuse. Recuse. Okay, Ms. Ratner and Ms. Fabiano recuse. Did we do May 19th? No, 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 I'm sorry. Right. The Special Board of Education meeting for May 19th, 2022. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> Recusals? Recuse. 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 Ms. Ratner. This is Fabiana. Recuse. Special Board of Education meeting for June 1st, 2022. Motion to approve? Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Call up Mr. Rutsky abstains. Any recusals? Recuse. Recuse. Mrs. Ratner and Ms. Fabiana recuse. Closed session meeting for June 1st, 2022. Motion to approve? Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Mr. Rutsky abstains. Any recusals? Recusal. Recusal. Okay, Mrs. Ratner and Mrs. Fabiana recuse. That is our meeting minutes. Thank you. Our 
Our next item on the agenda is our student board members report. Um, we'll start with um, Siobhan Gladapali. Would you like to give your report? Yeah. At Brookside, the, wait, can you guys hear me? <laughs> over at Brookside, um, is it on? All right, over at Brookside, Brookside's field day was on Friday, June 3rd. It was a great school-wide event, and they were very happy to have all the kids competing outside in fun events and activities. Um, the Barkley Brook slash Brookside PTA held its fifth grade picnic celebration at Eagles Landing on Friday, June 10th, which was a fun event for their fifth grade students to celebrate as they prepare on to middle school. At Woodland, through the Monroe Education Foundation grant, Mrs. Sorelli coordinated a virtual assembly for the entire fourth grade entitled History Comes Alive. The students learned about the family life and career of Thomas Edison, and the students also created wonderings, completed activity pages, and they also finally completed a Google form highlighting what they learned about this great New Jersey inventor. Ms. McTurnan's fifth grade class competed in Battle of the Books. Students are quizzed on designated books from a reading list. And the band and core students had their spring concert and it was a huge success. The concert link can also be found on the school website. Over at Appleguard, a band and chorus concert performance on June 2nd at the, there was a band and chorus concert performance at June 2nd at the high school. Uh, fifth grade Living History Museum was held on June 10th. Students participated in a unified field day on the 14th and there were moving up ceremonies for the fifth grade um, coming up on June 21st to June 22nd. Appleguard also received national recognition through character.org for a promising practice for a second year in a row. This event was won for the March Madness tournament and food drive which gives students the opportunity to contribute to the community while having fun researching colleges and playing basketball for well, that college's team. And all the way over at Barkley Brook, the first grade students were very excited to participate in a Crayola factory virtual field trip. During this virtual field trip, they learned more about crayons and they also participated in a scavenger hunt and they completed a, a variety of other fun activities. Their second grade students enjoyed a learning safari with the visit from the Eyes of the Wild, which is an organization that provides a home for exotic animals who were abandoned or abused. And these presenters brought animals including a chinchilla, snake, porcupine, sugar glider, and a wallaby to Barkley Brook and students had the opportunity to learn and interact with all these amazing animals. And at kindergarten, students took the stage at their end of the year kindergarten show. And uh, four-year-old preschool students celebrated the end of the year with their own special end of the year show. And finally, all Barkley Brook students participated in a school-wide school field day last week. And they'd like to extend a huge thank you to the PU teacher, Ms. Lubnebil, for planning the fun day and to all of the parent volunteers who, may, who helped make the day such a success. Great, thank you. And now we'll hear from our other uh, student board member, Samara Jane. Yep. So this month at Mill Lake, their unified uh, physical education students had a great day at the high school with the unified field day. Um, they would like to thank their unified uh, liaison, Ms. Myers, and a huge thank you to Ms. Dillon for organizing the day. They were happy to have their kindergarten and pre-K moving up ceremonies back at the Mill Lake, and the students and staff did an amazing job with their songs and performances. They also celebrated their field day, and they would also like to wish a very special happy retirement to Christine Bricks and Brant Lutzka, um, and to thank them for their years of service in making Mill Lake great. At the middle school on June 8th, 9th, and 10th, the seventh grade teams had their seventh grade uh, fun days, which included a food truck, outside activities, and an interactive murder mystery presented by a troupe of actors, which was very successful. June 8th and 9th was sixth grade orientations for parents and students. June 14th was the sixth grade lead day, um, which was an, an accumulating activity to the lead program that occurred during the year. June 16th, 21st, and the 23rd are the eighth grade dance, award ceremonies, as well as their graduation, all in person. Um, and at Oak Tree, they had a wellness week that took place from June 6th to the 10th. Students participated in a variety of activities and promoted healthy living. Uh, they had a movie night on June 6th. Uh, their kindergarten students will also have their celebration tea on June 16th. On June 13th, all of Oak Tree students participated in a mix it up lunch day. And their third grade students will have their celebration party on June 21st. And finally, at the high school, um, finals start tomorrow. 
The senior graduation ceremony will take place on Friday, June 24th at the Insurance Arena in Trenton. Project Grad will also be hosted at 10 p.m. at the school after that, and there will be a Cabernet night on June 20th at 7 p.m. in the Commons. Great, thank you very much. <clears throat> at this time, I would like to recognize uh, Samara as our outgoing uh, senior board member. Samara has been our... Samara has been our board member for the last two years, and we want to thank you for your service to the Board of Education in our district. Here at the Monroe Township High School, Samara is on the Girls Varsity Tennis Team. She's in the Honor STEM Academy and has been inducted into multiple honor societies. Next year, Samara will be attending Rutgers Business School as Business Administration, Information Technology, and a Finance major. On behalf of the Board of Education, we wish you the best as you begin the next chapter in your education. As you become a Scarlet Knight next year, always remember that you will forever be part of the Monroe Falcon family. Congratulations, and at this time, I would like to present you with this plaque from the Board of Education. Okay, at this time, we have the great honor of our presentations, our recognition of our retirees, as well as our student and staff recognitions. Mrs. Chanley and Dr. Lehman, would you like to begin the presentation? Good evening, everyone, and uh, this is the positive, wonderful part of getting to be the acting superintendent, working alongside with uh, the Board of Education, Dr. Lehman, and um, we want to just say thank you so much. I think it's fantastic when we have an opportunity to wish well to, I will first do our, our retirees, to, to wish well to our retirees. We realize that um, it's sad and it's happy because they get to move on to a different phase of their lives. We're always talking about journeys and children going on a journey. We said that to Samara, she's starting a new journey. And our staff that have tirelessly worked to do what is best for children are now going on the next journey. So I wish them all well. Some of them I've had the pleasure over the years to work with. Some I do not know at all and some I just know by name. But I wish each and every one of you a um, healthy, happy, peace, and safe opportunity in your next time and your next place of journey and wherever you wind up, whether it's vacationing or taking another job, God forbid, or anything else that you do. And I'm so glad that we're able to see families have joined them. So I, I see some of my old teachers here with, with husbands, wives, and family members, and it is a joyous occasion. So I want to just a nice round of applause for everybody at this time. Miss <laughs> Christine Brick, School Secretary, Mill Lake School. Crowd. Our next person to acknowledge is Robert Lawrence, a driver for our transportation department. This next individual is known to all for her amazing, amazing feats, things, everything that she's done with our physical education department, our unified, all of our students, Miss Kathleen Dillon. She shows up, we have it right here. Our next person is Miss, who I used to work with, Miss Susan Finkelstein from Special Education Paraprofessional Monroe Township High School. I know I saw her. 
Another teacher that I believe started at some other schools, but she is finishing her home at my home. Ms. Bernadette Chin from Teacher of Special Education, Monroe Township Middle School. Keeping with the theme of teacher of special education in Monroe Township Middle School, another teacher that I worked very closely gets to move on now, Ms. Denise Hain. We have a reading media specialist. I always like to use the word reading. We all, all too often forget the words library and reading. We go right to the media. So our media specialist at Mill Lake School, Brant Lutzka. Safety, security, it's at, the, it's at the forefront of what we need. So we are here to also welcome a very special appreciation to one of our security guards. Actually, I believe we have two more here. I don't know if they're here this evening. Mr. Edward Namowitz, Security Monroe Township High School. So directly from our Director of Facilities Department, our secretary to Ms. Mr. Jerry Take for many years, and I believe she came back this evening, Ms. Susan Mazur. There she is in the back. For another return debut, directly out of the superintendent's office, is Ms. Catherine Varacalo, confidential secretary to many, many superintendent of schools. <laughs> We have many different people that work in different facets, as we said this evening, from driving our children, keeping them safe on the bus, keeping them safe in the schools, library, making them have a love for reading, special education, regular education, and of course we have Maria Brill, a school psychologist from Woodland School.
Keeping with the theme of Woodland School, we have Mrs. Jennifer DeLillis, Teacher of Special Education at Woodland School. I hope this person is here because I'm going to say her name correctly because someone corrected me before. So we have, a, once again, a driver who keeps our children safe from Transportation Department, Nina Green. Woodland School is very popular. Everybody's ready to retire. I apologize. Patricia McTurnan, teacher of grade five, Woodland School. From our Barkley Brook School, we have Maureen Sutter, Learning Disabilities Teacher Consultant. And last but most certainly not least, another driver for our transportation department, Ms. Dolores Arado. A nice round of applause for all of our recipients on their new lives. We are ready to go from the staff to the students. I am thinking about having one table moved. I think it might be best. Mr. Dursky, could I ask you to assist us? Just move something because didn't, we didn't realize this is. At this time, we're going to ask Mr. Dowling our Director of Athletics to come forward. As you know, we like to celebrate our children, which is why we're here. We usually do it twice a year. February, May, we realized that not only, we just realized we have too many, so we decided to separate it. So we had academics, and we had service clubs and service organizations, people that have given back in many different ways to the town, into different, um, what's the word I'm looking at, Ms. Gasco? competition, I think of math, competitions, STEM, and all these great things that we do. So here this evening, we're going to recognize our sports, but also some of our co-curricular activities in addition to sports. We were very excited to, recogni to recognize our Unified program last month because they got to go away to Florida and they went to been here. So we were very excited. I just want to make a note of that because we're very, very proud of our Unified program. So at this time, with no further ado, Mr. Dowling? It's not you. Oh, they told me you. That's okay. Ms. Gasco works perfectly. Ms. Gasco. Is this on? Are you going to do that? Do you want me to do that? I just don't think it's on. 
Hello. This spring, our fourth and fifth grade students participated in the annual Math League competition on, May, on April 26. To give you an idea, over one million students participate in the Math League contest each year in over 600 schools. So students had the opportunity to solve 30 multiple choice real world application problems in a 30 minute time period. There was a fourth grade test and a fifth grade test. They were separate. So to give you an idea and an understanding of the scoring, a score of 12 is considered commendable out of the 30. So this year in Monroe Township, we had 387 fourth grade students who wanted to take the contest and 522 fifth grade students take their grade level contest. Out of that, the top scores in our district, not just their school, but in the entire district, for grade four was Avi Jatana with a score of 25. So if you'd like to come up. Right, Avi, when you come up and get your certificate, if you want to give a handshake, a fist bump, or a wave, all right? Congratulations, Avi. And for our fifth grade students with a score of 27, and keep in mind that was a different test than the fourth graders, we have two winners, Lucia Katrensky and Ashrith Tatanedi. Congratulations. I'm going to turn the mic over to Dr. Rizal. Good evening, everyone. I am here to present the certificates for the New Jersey State Seal of Biliteracy. The New Jersey State Seal of Biliteracy is awarded to high school seniors who have demonstrated English language proficiency on one of the state approved graduation assessments as well as demonstrated proficiency in a second language. This might be a language that they studied such as Spanish, French, Italian, or Latin here in our district. But it might also be a native language or a heritage language. This is a program I am incredibly proud of and these students should be recognized for the distinction and the skills that they have. By literacy will serve these students not only in college and their career, but it also serves our community. So we are starting with the students who earn the seal of by literacy in Spanish. Sarabi Ashuk. <laughs> Vasista Banala. Rajika Chahan. Jason Chin. Natalia Delgado. Selsan Euphrasia. Chris Guerrara. Siri Harish. Prem Johnny. Bumika Nanjia. Pooja Menon. Kajuska Pizarro. Kenneth Seacat. and Steer Steven Varaghese.
Next, we have three recipients of the seal in French. <coughs> Rose Iyer. <laughs> Sanjna Ayagari. <laughs> and Sarah Benedicto. We have two recipients in Hindi, Srushti Basapuri Simran Harjani. We have one recipient for Tamal, Nefra Sakdevale. In Arabic, we have Habiba Farag, in Italian, we have William Peters, and finally for Latin, we have Isabella Consorti. I am now going to pass the microphone to Dr. Michael Mearson. Dr. Michael Mearson is a new faculty member this year at Monroe Township High School, and he has done a tremendous job with our Latin program, and is here tonight to present awards to Latin Award recipients. Good evening. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure and honor uh, to recognize students who made outstanding achievements this year and won one or multiple awards on national and state exams uh, in the field of classics. And before announcing their names, however, I would like to, to express my most sincere gratitude to our school, to our district, uh, for uh, absolutely extraordinary support and encouragement for our newly founded Latin Honor Society. Uh, we participated in three national exams. Uh, we went to state competition. And because we opened uh, the chapter of uh, Junior Classical League uh, very late in the year, absolutely everything we did uh, right before the deadline on a very short notice. For example, we went to a state convention. Uh, I applied for a field trip to state convention two weeks before that. I didn't really think it will happen. Well, it did. Uh, so uh, nothing of this would have happened without uh, extraordinary effort of so many people in this school, in this district. And the same effort is put in today in uh, 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 recognizing our students in uh, encouraging them to be proud of their achievements and uh, encouraging them to strive to strive for more and this we will be continue doing next year so now I will announce the winners and uh, uh, I would like just to separately say a few words about national Latin exam so what is national Latin exam it's it, it, well it's called national but it's actually given in 15 countries all over the world uh, of course United States uh, United Kingdom France uh, Italy China Japan you name it uh, so this is really huge achievement Okay, so, uh, and yes, and we have 56 awards overall. Now, uh, Yusuf Abdel Jawad, <laughs> National Latin Exam Silver Medal. Vanj uh, Sanan, State Contest Latin Sight Reading, so from our uh, convention, third place. 
Shrey Kantal Free Awards, National Latin Exam Certificate of Merit, fourth place, National Mythology Exam Certificate of Merit, third place, and original song on a classical topic, first place in state contest. Siri <laughs> Capisetti, National Latin Exam Certificate of Merit, fourth place. Sofia Papasov, three awards, National Latin Exam, Certificate of Merit, third place, National Mythology Exam, Certificate of Merit, third place, and 3D model, uh, first place, um, which she made with another student. I will announce here, and you can see this absolutely fantastic model in our third floor. Uh, Sue Tungan, National Latin Exam, silver medal, I'm Yehiman, National Latin Exam, Certificate of Merit, fourth place. <laughs> Rayan Bora, National Latin Exam, silver medal. <laughs> Nandini Miriala, National Latin Exam, silver medal, and Latin Oratory, first place in state contest. Nikhil Tumala, National Latin Exam, Silver Medal, National Mythology Exam, Silver Medal, and Gold Medal in National Latin Vocabulary Exam. <laughs> Nisark Parekh, National Latin Exam, Gold Medal. <laughs> Pranita Vishnubotla, National Latin Exam, Gold Medal, and Latin Oratory, second place in state contest. Jessica Drabik, National Latin Exam, Silver Medal. <laughs> Kelsey Barclay, National Latin Exam, Certificate of Merit, fourth place, state contest for Latin Sight Region, first place, and Latin Oratory State Contest, first place. <laughs> Lokit Sanjay Babu Narayanan. Silver medal for National Latin Exam and silver medal for National Mythology Exam and gold medal for National Latin Vocabulary Exam. <laughs> Marcus Aschettino, National Mythology Exam, silver medal. <laughs> Certificate of Merit, a fourth place National Latin Exam for Ian Bora. He's not here, I think. <laughs> uh, Benisha Patanaik, National Latin Exam, Certificate of Merit, fourth place, and Latin Sight Reading, second place in state contest. <laughs> Chakradar Patapu, two gold medals, one for National Mythology Exam and another for National Latin Vocabulary Exam. <laughs> Charika Gopi, Certificate of Merit, fourth place, National Latin Exam. <laughs> Elizabeth Braswell, Silver Medal, National Latin Exam. <laughs> Ethan Rego, National Latin Exam, Silver Medal and Gold Medal for National Latin Vocabulary Exam. Arnav Ramani, gold medal for National Latin Exam. <laughs> Arya Ravel, Certificate of Merit, fourth place, National Mythology Exam. <laughs> Ashika Chintaparti, National Latin Exam, Certificate of Merit, fourth place. Ashna Srivastava, National Latin Exam, gold medal. <laughs> Abhinav Samavinkata, uh, third place certificate of merit for National Latin Exam, 
third place for Latin vocabulary and derivatives in state contest, and third place for Latin grammar in state contest. <laughs> Abhishek Madesh, silver medal in national Latin vocabulary exam. <laughs> Amber Ola, certificate of merit, third place for national Latin exam. Amisha Divan, National Latin Exam, Certificate of Merit, third place. <laughs> Anand Suryanarayanan, National Latin Exam, Gold Medal. <laughs> Anika Paluri, National Latin Exam, Certificate of Merit, fourth place. Okay, and three gold medals. Anish Karapati. <laughs> national Latin exam, national Latin vocabulary exam, and national mythology exam. Anushka Kumano, certificate of merit for place, national Latin exam. Gianna Romeo, uh, co-author of Amazing Trojan Horse we have on the first floor. So first place for state in state contest of 3D model and second place for mythology painting state contest. <laughs> Sahas Sankranti, certificate of merit for place, national mythology exam. Asmita Adari, state contest, ancient jewelry, first place. <laughs> and Priyali Shah, national mythology exam, gold medal. <laughs> Thank you so much. My name is Ryan Parker. I'm a biology teacher at the high school. I'm also the Environmental Action Club advisor. I'm just going to read you something real quick. Uh, I know a lot of you have finals tomorrow, so we'll try to get through this. Uh, through hard work and dedication, uh, the Environmental Action Club and its green team members have acquired a $10,000 grant from Sustainable Jersey. We were one of 35 New Jersey municipalities, schools, school districts to receive a grant. Uh, the Sustainable Jersey grant is funded by PSENG. On May 23rd, Jiyad Shwam, Vidika Singh, and myself attended the Sustainable Jersey Grant Recipient Ceremony at TCNJ, where we accepted the check. Not a big check, it was a little small check, but we thought it would be a big check. Uh, Pose for pictures and network with Sustainable Jersey and the other recipients um, that were there from around the state. Um, this grant will be used to implement refillable, refillable water bottle stations throughout the high school. Uh, installation plans are scheduled for 2023 and 2024 school year. And uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, some of the key uh, people who participate in this, our executive board and our green team members. Um, yeah. uh, Vedika Singh. Giada Schwamm. <laughs> Yasmin Thomas. <laughs> Sonia Desai. Rajika Shoan. Uh, 
Uh, Rhea Patel. Sai Estrella Chego. Tampi Shaw. Excuse me. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Zach Moralda, and I'm here on behalf of our STEM program here in the district. And before we turn it over to athletics, I would just like to take an opportunity to recognize some students that have taken some of our STEM and engineering program and spun it into an off-site co-curricular project that is worthy of recognition. Uh, at this point, I would like to recognize uh, our what we're called as the Falcon Flyers, which is our first ever district or really community uh, rocketry organization. And if you don't know anything about rocketry, it's one of the fastest growing areas of STEM and aerospace engineering. And we are excited about taking this project and the success of some of our students and integrating it to an already existing technology association and competitive STEM teams. So at this time, we would like to re uh, recognize and celebrate our students for their proactivity and their desire to take their learning to the next level. So I'm gonna call up the team who will be, uh, who is one of, uh, recognized as one of the top 100 teams in the country, and they're one of four teams from New Jersey uh, to represent New Jersey and to compete for over $100,000 in prizes. So I would like to call them up, the members of the uh, Falcon, uh, Falcon Flyers, excuse me. Uh, first up, we have Vignesh Dinesha. <laughs> Paul Michael Gentile. Anish Merchant. <laughs> Rahil Parikh. <laughs> Rahil Patel. <laughs> Hirsch Shah. <laughs> Jaden Shah. Keval Shulka and Haran Surti. And now we would like to uh, recognize our next student, Miss um, Chanley. Would you like to recognize this one? Do we have them? So every once in a while we have an opportunity when a student comes forward and requests that they could do some sort of a project for Eagle Scouts. An Eagle Scout accomplishment is above and beyond um, the time, the efforts that they put in for various different service projects, usually culminating in something that brings back to the community. In this particular case, it's a little near and dear to my heart because I believe that this individual reached out and I want to say it was before the pandemic and they wanted to do a rock project similar to the rock project that we have in front of the middle school. So if you look at the middle school, we have a beautiful rock project to the right and in front of the Performing Arts Center that was done um, um, totally, of course, um, pro bono, and it was done by Mr. Chanley, who is my husband, a teacher at the high school. He volunteered, and I have to thank Tidbury Farms as well as Bauman Landscaping and the PSA at the time who donated um, either all of the products or paid for everything so that it was of no cost at all to the district or to the community and they did a beautiful job. So this young man reached out when I was, at the, when I was still the principal over there and said, we really like to do something. Would it be okay if I mirrored the same thing on the opposite side? I said, oh my goodness, please do. And we are happy to say as we stand here together literally together outside. This young man did a fabulous job. He sent me outrageous pictures, and we are so proud that he decided to do his Eagle Project with our community at Monroe Township Middle School. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge Mihir Nagalia.
Good evening. My name is Sean Dowling, and I'm your director of athletics. It is a great night to be a Falcon. <clears throat> I'd like to thank Superintendent, Acting Superintendent Ms. Shanley, Assistant Superintendent Dr. Lehman, Principal Dr. Higgins, Ms. Scurvy, and the rest of the Board of Education for your wonderful support of Falcon athletics throughout the entire year. And uh, all of our, on, that's on behalf of all of our student athletes. Uh, the word student always comes first uh, before student athlete. And student athletes we are recognizing tonight exemplify that as they have not only, have excelled not only on the field, but in the classroom as well. Uh, for tonight, some of our uh, student athletes and coaches won't be here. They have prior commitments. They have summer league games and coaching. And uh, there are, I believe, two postseason banquets tonight as well. So uh, let's get started. As uh, Ms. Shanley eloquently stated earlier, uh, our wonderful unified basketball team, Team New Jersey, just to update you, was an awesome representation uh, for Monroe Township High School and our district and community, placing fifth in their black bracket in the 2022 U.S. Special Olympic Games. Okay, so we're gonna start sport by sport, so you may see stu some student athletes up here more than once, and uh, a correctable error that I will correct tomorrow. We are missing three certificates that I will take care of. So, first off, I'd like to recognize, and we are gonna recognize, uh, Greater Middlesex Conference team champions, state champions, for, and all conference players. If we recognized all of our all division players, we'd be here a very long time. <laughs> so uh, for boys cross country, Joseph Sorella, Jaden Ennis, and Mon Patel. will come tomorrow. The next, uh, the next six recipients were recognized at prior events uh, statewide and conference-wise. So uh, for our Ava Prinzo was our representative for the National Girls and Women's in Sports Day. Our two Greater Middlesex Conference Scholar athletes were Sydney Wolven and Bryce Adio. Our NJSIAA Scholar athlete is Jillian Waxmunsky. And then recognized for their sportsmanship and outstanding character on the field or court was Emery Cratchman and Emily Ward. Once again, all of them were recognized at uh, outside banquets uh, with their peers from other schools and around the state. Girls Cross Country. The GMC Conference All Group 4 team and All Conference Amelia Arts. And also uh, very proud of our team. They were also voted by their peers as uh, the Sportsmanship Award for uh, their division. Girls Field Hockey All Conference, Allison De Palma. And all-conference field hockey, Marissa Schwab.
And our girls soccer program, all conference, all state, by, uh, and voted all state by the New Jersey Girls Soccer Coaches Association was Sydney Wolven. <laughs> She's not here. Girls volleyball, all conference, Mary Rose Salva. I'd like to bring up our head so boys soccer coach, Steve McKenzie. He will announce the awards for his, so his GMC Conference Championship team. Thank you. Um, first, we, we, we instill in our, our athletes, and our athletes take a lot of pride in the successes, not just our program, um, but their peers and, and the community and the school. Um, so, and we do know and we understand it takes a lot of people to uh, maintain the successes we've had in the past. It's not just the athletes going out and playing. So we would like to thank, and we get great support from Dr. Higgins, our principal, uh, Mr. Dowling, uh, the Board of Education, administration, and especially our parents. Our parents are very special to our program, and a lot of them are here. A lot of them are graduating, um, but I do want to thank you. Um, first off, I do want to recognize one athlete who was recognized for his sportsmanship, a certain act of sportsmanship, um, and on a poster that's gone national by the NJSIA, and that's Alex uh, Mancinelli. For all the boys soccer players, uh, if you could stand um, for your acts, um, winning the conference championship this year and finishing number one in the conference. Uh, and then we have specific individual awards. Um, first, Pratham Mahesh. Pratham was a three-year varsity letter winner, first team all-conference, um, all-state recognition, all-division, and he's headed to Rutgers University. Uh, Jared Krasnoff. Uh, Jared's a four-year varsity letter winner, um, first team all-conference, all-state recognition, all-division, and was GMC Player of the Year this year. He's going to continue his career. And last but not least, uh, Josh Cruz. Josh un unfortunately suffered a knee injury in the state final last year, continued through his senior year. But last year, as a junior, um, he was a first team All State player, first time in school history for a junior to be first team All State. He was also all division, all conference this year, and will continue his playing career at Seton Hall University. Thank you, Coach. Next up, we have our state champion competition cheer team. Is Coach Brown here? Okay, so uh, Juliana Pasalacqua. Juliana Scuddy. Summer Reneo. Krista Tramontana. Patience Darko. Megan Lawson Levy. Paige Forno. Alexa Tanzer. Rachel Cicchetti.
Madison Chervenyak. <laughs> Sabrina Cipolletta. <laughs> Fallon Massey. <laughs> Isabella Tufano. Ashley DeVito. <laughs> Meredith Armstrong. <laughs> Natalie Primavera. <laughs> Ashley Rund. <laughs> Lauren Custodio. Alexa Pat. <laughs> Sophia Brennan. <laughs> Morgan McDermott. <laughs> and Miss Shanley. No, she's not on the team. She's not on the team. So once again, congratulations to our state championship competitive cheer team. Next up, we have girls basketball all-conference, Katie Loro. For boys basketball, Jonathan Okocha. Both, I believe, are at Summer League right now. And... Our boys basketball coach, Jeff Warner, was GMC Coach of the Year and Home News Tribune Coach of the Year. So, and he's coaching right now as well. Next up, for wrestling, our GMC All-Conference and District 24 champion, Anthony Profacci. Anthony doesn't know this, but if you look at our video screen, he and I had the same hair when I was in high school. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Next up, I'd like to bring up our ice hockey coach, Kevin Felice, who is also in his first year as ice hockey coach and the GMC Coach of the Year. thank the uh, members of the board, um, our school administration, and Mr. Dowling, especially for all the support we received this year. In my first year, we were able to be as successful as we were, um, thanks to all the support we received. Um, so I just want to recognize three of my players that really made my first year special and really helped us make it to the uh, conference finals this year. Um, they really stepped up, became great leaders, and really kind of introduced me to the program. So um, the three players I'd like to recognize are Aiden Getz, Nicholas Izzo, and William Bergshaw. All three players received um, GMC first team uh, recognition, and again, really helped us have a special season this year. So thank you guys, and thank you, Mr. Green. Coach, talk about fake. Coach Felice and I taught math together before we both came to Monroe. So I was at the right place at the right time. That's it. Next up, Winter Track All Conference, Mon Patel. And All Conference Group Four Champion in the 800 meter, Jay Nennis. Bowling, GMC All-Conference, C.J. Fogor. <laughs> Next up, 
Now we head to spring, boys tennis. GMC All-Conference, R. John Aiden. In girls track, All-Conference, Michelle Toda. And Amelia Arts, back up. Michelle's going to run at Quinnipiac, and Amelia's going to run for the Falcons next year. <laughs> for boys volleyball, all, content, all conference, Vasista Banala. Golf All Conference, Chris Anand. And All Conference, Eshwara Zentil. For baseball, All Conference, Harrison Lawen. Softball All Conference, Abigail Pulowski. Girls Lacrosse All-Conference, Gracie Beretsky. They have their banquet tonight. And Christian Giordano for Girls Lacrosse. Now I'd like to ask Coach Joe Yanoni to come up, our boys lacrosse coach, to present our awards for boys lacrosse. Thank you, Coach Dowling, and uh, thank you everybody for your support this year. Uh, the school administration and Board of Ed, if you don't know, but you, hopefully you do, the boys lacrosse team had another outstanding lacrosse season. Right. I, I couldn't do it without the help of my coaches and the players. They put in a lot of time. And we won our fourth consecutive GMC tournament this year as well. So, thank you. 18, 19. 21, 22. We didn't have a season in 20, so we're running out of uh, fingers for the rings, but we'll get, you know, it's okay. But I'd like to thank everybody for their support, and we have two all-conference players to um, bring up. First, Tyler Scott. <laughs> Tyler is going to play at Keene University. And our second all-conference player, uh, Christian Updale. <laughs> Christian is a junior. He's undecided. He's getting a lot of looks, Duke, Virginia, Cornell. So he'll, the world will await his decision soon. But Christian's only a junior. Uh, thank you, everybody. Appreciate the time. I appreciate that. Thank you, Coach. Once again, it was a great night to be a Falcon. Thank you, everyone, for your support. Thank you, Mr. Dallin. Congratulations again to all of our retirees and all of our students. Our next item on the agenda is our committee reports. Do we have any committees give a report this evening? Ms. Fabiano? 
Um, the Community Engagement and Communication Committee met on Tuesday, June 7th. All members were present. We discussed the results of the communication survey and ways we could improve our communication based on feedback provided from the community. We also discussed how we are working to obtain contact information from the senior communities and the possibility of um, inviting HOA reps from each community to participate in our committee meetings. Ms. Bora presented some ideas regarding the district Facebook page and how it can uh, better be utilized. The advertising initiative has graduated from this committee and will be discussed in upcoming finance and or bg and meetings. And lastly, we reviewed the chain of command that was presented by Mrs. Chanley. Great. Great Does anybody have any questions, comments? All right. We have another committee wishing to give a report. Mrs. Belko. Yes, um, I will report on the uh, curriculum committee, which was held at 6 p.m. on uh, Wednesday, June 8th. We had a presentation um, by Danielle Drust, and we uh, were given information about three social studies books and one science book. So the first book I'll talk about is the eighth grade social studies book, United States History, History Voices and Perspectives, Early Years. And it's actually a copyright of 2023. Um, so it is the latest edition um, from McGraw-Hill, and it aligns to our, our social studies curriculum standards as well as the C3 framework um, from the way they explained it, it. It aligns with the books that were brought in previously for the sixth and seventh grade, and so that it, it'll be a, a very uh, natural transition from the grades with this um, book. The teachers were in love with it. It had a lot of, the, one of the things they liked about this book was the ability to be able to do differentiation within the classroom um, for all students and um, be able to use the uh, tools that come with this book to allow um, to be able to teach to, students to the way that they learn, which I think um, you know, is, is our goal um, all around. The science book is the AP Environmental Science book, Exploring Environmental Science, science excuse me, for AP. Um, the publisher is the National Geographic Learning uh, Group, so um, you can imagine that the pictures and the graphics and things are, um, you know, that was one of the things that the um, teachers who were given this book, uh, that, that's what, one of the reasons why they chose it. It has um, focuses on environmental things such as uh, sustainability, inquiry-based approach to learning. So if you see something and you think, you know, hey, I wonder, you know, and, and, and giving some of those things. There's also um, an ability with online homework with immediate feedback. And if you go to the curriculum committee meeting, you'll see some discussion about that. The AI may not be as up to speed um, it doesn't, it's not, not as perfected yet, but um, a good tool for the students to be able to make sure that they're um, staying on, la, um, on task with the book. The other book was the Social Studies Textbook um, Adoption, AP Human Geography. Human Geography, A Spatial Perspective. It's designed specifically for AP students. It aligns with the College Board curriculum and exam, and it has an emphasis um, on inquiry again. Um, excellent graphics and maps. It's also pictures are, that are in here are from the National Geographic Photographers and videos are available within each unit for the students to really get a, a sense of, um, of the human geography and, um, and information that's there. Very, um, ex you know, I was very excited about this. I wanted to take this course when I saw <laughs> this book. Um, so then there is AP European History. It's a history of Western society since 1300 for the AP level. I can't remember what's gone on in my life. I can't imagine trying to remember all these things from, from way back, but it sounds like a very interesting class. It also aligns with college board curriculum and exam descriptions. It talks about historical thinking skills, primers. Um, it, there's exam practice um, questions at the end of each unit, which will help the students prepare for the AP exam if they show, choose to take it at the end of the year. Um, not all of our students choose to take the AP exam. They'll take the classes, but they don't all take the exam. Um, and so the, the, um, the teachers and uh, Ms. Truss were very excited about all four of these books and the curriculum committee does recommend to the board tonight that we adopt these. Great, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, do we have any other committees wishing to give a report? Mrs. Sure. Finance committee met on Wednesday, June 8th. First item on the agenda was the monthly review of the attorney fees. Ms. Allen provided the data that since July 1st, we're at 196K. April's invoices were $17,395, with the over portion being the largest category at 9827 
Next item was the monthly review of the bill list. You'll see on the agenda tonight an item for approval CDK electronic requisition system. Cost is $9,650 for the initial year cost and the current annual renewal was $2,935 license fee. This should help update the systems and processes for handling invoices throughout the district so more invoices can be presented for board approval prior to pressure for payment to bypass board approval. That will align us with how other districts' boards are able to have board oversight to do bill list transactions in advance of remittance to the vendors. The committee recommends approval of this item. As of the Finance Committee meeting, the bill list for the month was $13,912,155. And there was a um, additional addendum added because we're in that odd you know, end of the year trying to get everything ready and accounted for for extended school year. So there is an additional $732,062. Um, and that was the last minute adjustments there. Ms. Allen has spearheaded a revamp of how the bill list is presented to give board members clear and concise visibility to those invoices that are being paid prior to board approval with color-coded categorization explaining circumstance, so no more of the cryptic check marks which we had started getting, and also separating out those items being held for board approval, so everything's kind of separate and categorized. The committee applauds the business office for working toward resolution of this historical issue. Ms. Allen has provided the committee with the 2022 check date schedule and calendar, which clearly outlines the cutoffs for invoice submission to be included in each cycle. This will be circulated to the department lead so everyone can be cognizant of not missing cutoffs by a day or so and then unnecessarily being subjected to having to shift into the next month's cycle. This awareness should help elevate sensitivity to progressing invoice documents through the approval process so they are paid timely and efficiently. Next item on the agenda were contracts for renewal. There are many contracts presenting on the agenda for renewal this month. Nature of the school year transitioning with many of the vendors' contracts expiring June 30th and renewing for July 1st is common. The committee had asked to be provided with the details of contracts that are requested for approval for board action. So we had a stack of them. The committee had the opportunity to review and ask questions, as has the full board. There were no contracts the committee identified as needing to be pulled out of the board action. Some of these contract specifics were identified and or discussed during the committee meeting. So please be sure if you wanted to have some color added to the specifics of some of the um, more common or higher dollar items, we did outline them there. Um, similar to the stragglers from the bill list, we did get some additional contracts between committee and tonight um, that also needed to be incorporated in at the last minute to um, address needs for extended school year or other imminent requirements. So at the time I finalized these notes, we had received the renewal for um, Holman, Fernia, Al Allison, HFA, the auditors, a um, Marzano Evaluation Center for renewal of the I Observation Annual License, $18,128, and the um, renewal for Brunswick Urgent Care to be the district school physicians. They get a retainer of $12,000 that's paid $1,000 monthly around the year. And then there's an additional fee schedule where appropriate. Next item on the agenda was the 2223 lease purchase. That is on uh, for approval. There's a resolution in this month's board action. The resolution authorizes the lease purchase of equipment and vehicles. It's similar to previous years concerning the amount of financing, $3,559,500. After approval of the, rev of the resolution at tonight's board meeting, the notice of bid will be published, advertised June 21, June 22. The finance bid, financing bid opening will be July 7, July 20th. That board meeting should have the request for board approval for the bid award resolution, and then the legal closing of the financing should happen approximately August 3rd. The committee recommends approval of this resolution. Um, following up to one of the items that were from last month's discussion of the METS contract, which is in the, um, the food services provider, Ms. Allen provided an explanation of the profit guarantee. So METS manages the food service fund. All monies received, including federal and state reimbursements and sales, are deposited directly into the board bank account. METS invoices us every month for the expenses incurred to manage the food service fund, and there's sort of a um, 
a schedule of what categories are incurred for that. They charge also an annual fee, which is $72,800 for the 21-22 school year, $74,984 for the 22-23 school year. At the end of the school year, if the profit falls below the guarantee amount, which in 21-22 the guarantee was 86,628, and the guarantee for 22-23 is 90,000, METS will issue us a check to bring the profit up to that amount. So when the profit exceeds the guarantee amount, the board retains the entire profit, which we would already have possession of, so they're not actually cutting us a check. There's no additional deposit that's coming from that. And there are additional expenses incurred by the board, such as the food service director's salary, building maintenance, and equipment, which is expense through depreciation. These are not factored into the guarantee amount. They are separate from the METS operational expenses. The income loss is presented in the annual audit report and reflects the combined amounts, the METS's expenses and the board's, and the METS profit and loss does not appear separately. This year, the food service fund operations revenues are higher than normal due to increased reimbursement rates and the free meals for students. The committee had discussion concerning wrapping arms around the revenue specifics and requirements to be compliant concerning the amount of monies eligible to be retained in the fund and attention from administration to determine how and where to spend the excess most efficiently. The final item was the effective school solutions grant. Mrs. Chanley advised the committee of a grant which will provide a mental health clinician on site at the middle school to work with staff and students next year. There is no cost to the district, but since there is a contract, the item was presented to the finance committee. This grant is valued at $170,000 and the finance committee supports acceptance of this recommendation. And that concludes my report. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Pierman? Ms. Arminio. I would just like to thank uh, so far all the committee reports because and, and thank you for the job you're doing on the finance committee. Thank you. Um, I, I don't always get to, to see the committee, um, but your report is succinct and uh, informative, so I appreciate it. And I'm enjoying my stay at the uh, curriculum committee with you as the chair. So. <laughs> And unfortunately, I'm not in your committee, but thank you for your report as well. I, I just have to say that. Okay, may I, uh, policy? Yes. Okay, policy committee uh, met on uh, uh, June 7th, uh, and we discussed, uh, this discussion centered around the existing school district security policies. Uh, the committee members reviewed and reaffirmed the policies that are on the list tonight for uh, really a, a first reading, but uh, it's real for, for most of them with the exception of two. It's just a reaffirmation. We didn't change uh, The policies but given the state of affairs in our country. We decided to take a look at our uh, Our policies and we had our district uh, security Director there and I just like to point out a couple things uh, with our policies uh, on, in the, on the agenda items, we have P7440, which is the policy, and R7440, which is the, uh, oh my goodness, uh, the regulation, excuse me. So that policy was uh, reviewed, and do we, did we have any changes on that one? Yes. We added to the regulation, not the policy, correct, Ms. Chanley? Written? Is that what we, we, we written? Right. That's correct. So the regulation, and I, I'll just read the change. We're talking about the security of doors in the classrooms and the new, I just want to read the new policy, not the old one. Okay, so this is it. Um, the staff members are prohibited from permitting, uh, permitting their key control system authorization to be used by another unless prior written approval is obtained from the principal or designee at the building level and the superintendent or the designee at the district level or in the event of an emergency. So that's a, that's a change of language essentially on, uh, that would be number two, uh, page three of eight on regulation 7440. We thought that it was prudent to just add a few uh, language uh, changes for that. That's that one. Uh, the next one was uh, 
policy for uh, seven, excuse me policy 7446 and that is school security program again we reviewed it why would we review a policy that we're not changing well primarily because the last time it was reviewed was May 9th 2018 and while we had our uh, security director with us we asked him if there are any changes that he would recommend uh, to update these policies so again that was a the last time it was looked at was May 9th 2018 so it will be a reaffirmation of this policy there were no changes to this one the next one is the uh, the next one on the list is policy 8310 but we're going to hold that till last and we'll have Ms. Chanley take talk about that one that's the uh, public uh, public records and what I said at the policy committee meeting was that uh, while I'm an advocate and the board is an advocate for transparency and uh, public records being given to the public at at their request there will be things when we talk about security of our children security of our buildings that will not be available for open public records so these are things that talk about how we proceed with our emergency situations what kind of uh, how we lock down our facilities and some of the things we do those are not open for uh, public view um, and I think everyone can understand why that would not be prudent to do uh, the next policy we we took a look at was uh, policy 84420 which is emergency evacuation and the uh, partner regulation is 8420 and we just talked about school security drills Mr. Uh, Piero gave us some information about how the drills were done and uh, that's going to be an ongoing uh, situation in our schools of course and the last one is I think that's it uh, I, I brought something to the policy committee uh, that wasn't on our agenda during that meeting so I'll probably reintroduce it next uh, month and it's uh, an adjunct to the 8420 it's 8420.7 and it's lockdown procedures so I'd recommend that all of our parents take a look at these policies and if they have any questions they can always address them through the board president and the acting superintendent and we do have our so let me mention that our director of security is also the liaison between the police department and the school and they are also the certificate security uh, personnel so we have the proper according to our uh, su uh, acting superintendent we have all of the proper certifications for our security director and the security people and they we do have ongoing training I think we may talk about that some more as we go through the summer uh, in, in readiness for next year I believe that's what we have for the policy and Ms. Chanley, would you like to just briefly talk about the open public records changes? It, these, these changes were recommended uh, by uh, Acting Superintendent Chanley. Thank you very much, Ms. Arminio. Um, so just to be very short, when I came on board, um, whatever the time frame was, six, seven months ago, um, some situations were brought to my attention with regard to the way things were handled. I took an opportunity to look at the organizational chart, which was in my, within my purview because it was one of my um, superintendent goals. Some things were moved around at that time. We, um, we placed the uh, OPRA, which is the same thing as the custodial records, um, within the superintendent's office. We thought it was appropriate so that we can um, we could all be abreast and, and assured that transparency was occurring and that um, I was aware as the chief um, administrative officer just to see what was going on. Um, at this time, we've taken a look at the amount of hours and time and the inability of the um, confidential secretary to the superintendent to be able to stop um, the job. It's not a, um, it's not an, uh, this particular position because that person, um, Ms. Zielinski, who does an incredible job and she did give me permission to say her name. She does a fabulous job. She's constantly always handling many, many things. And therefore, we thought it'd be prudent to reach out to the attorney. And at that time, we spoke to the attorney and we said, we want to make sure that we're following appropriate protocol. And in the past, an individual's name was associated in the policy. 
and it was told to um, it was told to me by counsel that it is a designated appointed person by the superintendent on a yearly basis if necessary, and that a name does not need to be associated, associated with it, but rather it can just be appointed by the superintendent. So taking advice of counsel, what we will be doing is we will, we do have it as a first read, we do then have it um, as part of the policy. The policy will actually read, and I believe Ms. Arminio has it in front of her, which I do not, but from memory, I believe it says, um, Oprah, custodia of records, would be hereby designated by the superintendent and yearly appointed, and please do not quote me because that's just off the top of my head. In summary, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's pretty close. Um, at this time, that would also then play um, as part of my um, superintendent recommendations in just a little bit. I'm also going to be recommending um, after having a conversation and doing some research into other districts, we're going to be doing what we call a part-time secretary, an OPRA custodian of records. We feel that the public has every right to um, fast, and expedient responses to their OPRA records. And in order to do that, we did evaluate what it would look like, whether we did a stipend position, a full-time secretary position, a part-time secretary position. Um, I will let you know that um, I have looked into other districts. Some districts do have a full-time OPRA secretary. We felt for purposes of being um, fiscally responsible to the community, we thought we would start out with a part-time secretary. I then took the time to meet with the appropriate, um, it's MTBO, Thank you, MTBOS. That's excellent, MTBOSSA, and that they're basically the not the non-affiliates, but they're the secretaries affiliated within the central office. I met with both of the representatives to discuss this. I also brought in the director of human resources. We sat down together and we decided that it would be appropriate, and it's it's listed as a part-time secretary. It would be exactly off the top of my head, 41.25 hours, which would equate to 4.25 hours per day. It would allow that individual to solely um, respond, as we should, um, in a transparent manner and in an expedient manner, directly to our public with regards to any requests in the OPRA process. So that is my recommendation. I will be mentioning that when I go through my role of my exact recommendation. I hope that provides enough information to the board and to the public. Thank you. I, I you have before, before we get questions, I just wanted to uh, mention that during the committee meeting, uh, there were some concerns primarily brought up by me about uh, the custodian being someone that is designated every year. And that is really not the intention of this. We, we hope that we have a custodian that will remain the custodian of record because they will be dealing with confidential information. There will be some training according to this. Uh, the, the state has a government records council that oversees open public records issues. Um, I'm, I'm not that fond of them. They, don't, they tend not to really be that very responsive, but if they have training and perhaps we can get our custodian of record trained with the New Jersey school boards, whatever is available, I'd like to see that incorporated into their uh, their daily, especially when they get, you know, when they first get started and learn about open uh, public If records. I may respond to that. So just so everyone's aware and we just want to be transparent, we have um, done research and we've reached out to the council and we've looked at many, many different plateau, um, plateaus and there was no, there currently is no training, so what we're going to do is we're going to take one more step, reach out to the NJPSA where we actually have training that comes in when we do our school law and we're going to ask him, uh, and of course if there is a course, we do believe it's important because we want to make sure that we're at our highest level of training and make sure that we do things right. So we're going to see if perhaps he could come in and do an in-person or Zoom or whatever they may call it training, or perhaps there's even a training where we can send the individual, even if it requires them to take the day or days or whatever it is, because we have done our due diligence. And uh, I'm going to say that it's very sad that um, rolling training, for lack of a better term, is not out there. Right. It is not out there. So I did want to comment to that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody? I have a question yes. for you. Mr. Chiro. Do we have any policies regarding electronic devices at our board meetings, personal electronic devices? Well, if you just look, I, I believe they're even on our agenda. We don't right. really pay attention to them to our shame, in my opinion. Well, and I agree with you. Yeah. So if we see board members typing away and, and potentially typing people out in the audience and the public and going back and forth, we could open that if it's on their own devices. Am I wrong? I don't, that's a legal question. Is that right? Can I do that? Yeah, the, the um, thank you. The location of the communication is not relevant. So that question comes up sometimes if I use my Gmail account versus the board account. It's whether it's board business or not. 
The origin of that case has nothing to do with electronic communications, by the way. It was uh, a mayor, I think it was Fairlawn, who thought he could get around an open public records request by taking files and bringing them to his house. They're at my house now, they're not at City Hall, you can't have them. And the court said it doesn't matter where they're located, it's whether or not it's municipal <laughs> business or not. The same has been applied to electronic communications. Okay. Thank you. And I also believe that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'll ask it as a question. Is there a potential for text messages between board members to be discoverable in a case? So the short answer is yes, right? Uh, if we're talking about in a case, that's different. If we're just sticking with Oprah, the litmus test is whether or not the communications are called for by the request and that they relate to board business. Correct. So if you were texting with a board member about your family, about the Mets, about the weather, no. Okay. If it was related to, well, no, it would have to be about the Mets. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> but um, if it was about board business, then it's fair game. Again, it doesn't matter whether it's text and email, doesn't matter whether it's a Gmail address or the board address, it's the subject matter. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's go. I had a question, Mrs. Armenia. Actually, not a question. I, I had a comment, a thank you comment. Um, I wanted to commend the policy committee and the administration for bringing up all the district security policies um, f for discussion so quickly, so timely, because uh, a lot of our concerns were addressed through that. Um, I did have one small question. I know all of our policies, especially the ones that were regarding security, um, derive from the statutes, the NJSA statute. How recently have those been updated? The state statutes? Yes, the state statutes. We'd have to ask the legislator on, legislation on that. However, um, our, the, we contract, and the contract mm -hmm. is on the agenda As, tonight. Yeah, they okay. send us, when the state statutes and everything change, they send us the alerts. In fact, I just got an alert yesterday that I'll be looking okay. to for next month. I don't know what it is yet. I haven't been able to open it. So we get the, any updates from the state. Is that correct, Mr. Gagliardi? Mm -hmm. And then you would, you would let us know also if there are things that are addressed, right? from the state that we should know as a board? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that we tell you every time the law changes. No. But, but um, we have been asked to comment on different policies and proposed changes from time to time. And of course, we're happy to do that. But the statutes, uh, I, we get the alerts from what uh, the organization that we pay is, is Strauss Estimate. Right. So if you, were, if you were working on a certain policy in the district, which right now I'm referring to the security policies, is there a way for us to go and check when, because I tried to do a little Google search, but I didn't spend too much time on it, and I figured I would ask you. Um, is there a way for us to verify when was this last looked at? I know you're the getting- The state a, statutes? Yes. I, for the ones that we are referring to in our policy we, for- I am, tr I am trying to, yeah, well, Google is, is, the, is, is one very, of the things. Okay. I try to, now that I, I am, I'm seeing this, I try to actually go to the state statutes but they're voluminous, so it's yeah. sometimes very difficult. In fact, uh, I did take out like 65 pages because last month there was a reference to a state statute. I think it was um, NJSA 6. Mm -hmm. You took me in reference to responding to the parents? Uh, it was six, uh, uh, but it was 65 pa here, let me, It was 65 pages, so uh, I haven't gotten to that yet, but I, I hope to. It's um, NJSA 6A colon 16, and it's primarily for support student development. And there's a whole bunch of state things. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if Mr. Gagliardo wants to read it, <laughs> um, well, or we want to pay for him no, to I'm read not it. I page through it all, all the time just for fun, but. Um, <laughs> so I, do I. Yeah, I think, I think what you're talking about is actually administrative code as opposed to statute, oh, but statute. Okay. Strauss, Strauss Esme, in terms of your policies, would check both. Strauss Esme, okay. So, so it's clear I am not an attorney. <laughs> I no, did download you. it, but it was a code. You're right, it was a code and not a uh, statute. But thank you, and Mrs. Um, Scurby, if I may just take, go back one second to Ms. Bierman. I w also wanted to thank you. We just brought up the Mets accounting uh, question in the last meeting, and your brief and the meeting deliberation was excellent. Thank you so much. Yes, Ms. Allen has been extremely forthcoming and responsive in anything that we've required. Ms. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ratner? Um, so first thing, um, and just Mr. Chair, actually there's only two of us um, with personal 
devices up here, although smartphones honestly are mini computers this day and age, um, I'd be glad to show you everything on here. I take my notes, typewrite type write them instead of write them down, so that way it's organized and it's just easier for me. Um, but I'd be glad to show you anytime. Um, that said, I also do know that we, as a district, are able to provide laptops for our teachers. Is that something that perhaps we would want to look into doing for Board of Education members as well? And that way, we don't even have to necessarily, at least as far as laptops go, worry about that because those are then be able to be searched. They're here. Right. We're allowed to. You okay. can request that. Yes. Okay. Um, and then I also just did have a question regarding um, the um, 8310 and the Oprah secretary, but if I can, I can ask that now or I can wait until the recommendation, no. whichever is. Okay. Um, so I guess, uh, you know, I totally understand that, you know, it would be impossible for someone to be the secretary to superintendent and be able to fulfill all of the Oprah requests that come in. Um, although it does look like the number, at least according to what we've seen, has decreased over the last few months, or last month, I should say, based on what we're getting in our. Um, reports. Um, I know that in January the initial concern was that as superintendent you had wanted to receive information based on what data the community members had been requesting. Um, and so I guess my concern is if we are then taking this information and possibly bringing it outside of the superintendent's office. No, we would not be. They would, so, be, they would be stationed in the superintendent's office. Sorry, use your microphone. Oh, I apologize. Okay. Um, that's an excellent question, just so you know. Um, I didn't use the word data just to correct you, because that's not a word. I would not have said that we were looking at data. I just want to be kept abreast of what, what concerns were out there in the community, right. what types of information, and that person would be placed in the superintendent's office. Okay. So they just wouldn't be the confidential secretary of the superintendent. Okay. And then I guess my other question regarding Oprah in general, just to reduce costs, is have we looked into ways to streamline the process in regards to it? If there's a software out there so that if the same request comes in multiple times, it's not being handled multiple times and it's more easily accessed that way. I think one of the things I, I one, one of the reasons why I also thought it might be best to have um, a um, Oprah secretary is because I do agree that some sort of a library should be kept. I use the word library. It does not have to be physical hard copies. Of course, it could be digital, whatever is most economically and, and most easy um, and most user friendly. But I do believe that a lot of it is quoted by um, statute, law, mm -hmm. case law. And once you understand case law, this must be given because according to this case law. And I think that once we have someone who's only job is to do that, that is something that would be very realistic as far as, I'm going to use the word library, but mm -hmm. I do not mean paper necessarily. Right. No, I understand. And I think there might even be like online platforms that already sort of have that software very in place. Well, maybe. I don't, we we I have don't started to look at various online, online platforms for many different things that we haven't moved forward with. Okay. So thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Chiarella. Yes. On June 7th, Tuesday, 2022, we had a two-hour BG&T meeting, a one-hour meeting that turned into two hours. We had eight topics for discussion, sustainable uh, energy grant for MTHS water bottle fill stations. So uh, we received $10,000, 5,000 at a time, That's a big check right there. And it's for six water stations in the high school. So that will be a welcome addition to our high school. Mm -hmm. uh, it, they're, they, uh, they filter the water. They have indicators as to how many bottles we save the earth from, uh, you know, from landfills from. And it also tells how many, uh, you know, when it has an indicator for when the filter is old for us to change it. So I think, I think it's great. Uh, I, I have those in our offices, so I know that they work really well. Um, I, haven't, I haven't lost any hair or anything drinking that water. Have you, Adam? No. Um, we, we, uh, number two was we talked about the MTHS stopgap conversion of the or orchestra pit into usable space. So that I think that's a, you know, we're looking for every possible uh, avenue to use, use space that we have available so that our students are housed, so that we can, we can keep moving forward with as, uh, with as little pain as possible, even though we're, we're having pain. Uh, the lead, lead in the water testing program review. So Dr. Lynch came in, and uh, he's from environmental safety management. He gave us an overview of the test results. Also gave us hi, uh, some historical data because we've had this issue in the past. Uh, we talked about some uh, remediation and, and some of the measures that we were working on to take. Uh, at the time, we didn't have updated data, uh, but 
after our meeting, we, we, we did get word that we retested those areas and we were, uh, we did not have, we had acceptable levels of lead at the, in the same areas that we had, that we had concerns with prior. Number four was uh, security measure review. So uh, Director Pirro, our security director came in, gave us a good overview of what, you know, uh, uh, answered a lot of our questions, uh, laid a lot of our concerns. Our committee also asked him to come up with a wish list for the things that he thinks we need. So over the years, we've done a lot with hardening our entrances, uh, cards, a, key, a swipe card, access, license scanning access, uh, uh, and then we put in bulletproof vestibule, vestibules and stuff like that. We got a million dollar grant to do that. Mm -hmm. So we've done a lot of things. We've put armed police or armed, armed guards who were retired police in our schools. But my fear is that if we're not listening to our security professionals, are we not doing something that they might need us to do in order to make sure our kids are safe, which is the number one reason why we were doing any of this. And he did bring up some things like maybe needing a second officer in the elementary schools and things like that. So the committee asked him to go back, come up with a wish list and bring it back to us so that we could then look at, look at that and, and slide it into our budgets going forward. We might not be able to get everything uh, next year, for instance, but maybe over three or four or five years we could implement those things. We, received, we, uh, we also spoke about the NJSIG safety grant, $44,955 for Barclay Brooks CCTV. So uh, that's a, another, another good one. Is Mr. Tague here? Mm -hmm. yes. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Tague, for your hard work on, on these grants, and thank you to the administration for the same thing. So uh, this goes a long way to defraying costs from our taxpayers and being able, uh, you know, enabling us to offer uh, things like, like the water purification, CCTV, and things like that to keep our children safe. We also talked about the update to the track and turf replacement project, and Mr. Tag let us touch the turf. So that was the <laughs> highlight of my week, believe it or not. Um, we re we, the, next, the next thing we did was we reviewed the high school scope for the referendum, <laughs> and then uh, the last thing we reviewed was the New Jersey Clean Energy Program, SSB stimulus completed, uh, and we looked at all the projects that we've had done in the past, the things that we did like Oak Tree, um, uh, Solar, we looked at the SRECs, the uh, SRECs and, and what we get back uh, for, the, for what we sell back to the grid <coughs> and things like that. So we looked at, you know, we just, we, he gave us a comprehensive list of the things we've done and then looked at some of the things that we can do in the future. So that it was a good overview and it was a long meeting, but it was worth it. That's it. Okay. Any questions, Ms. Spearman? On the water filling stations, so the speaker earlier, the biology teacher, he had mentioned that it would be for 23-24 school year. I was wondering if there was any insight on why that took a long, took a whole school year, whatever, to get in there. For 23-24? Maybe that's when the project will get done. It takes a while. That's a sure. I don't know, it was only $10,000 with the money. It seemed like something. Yeah. And, I, it was, and it was explained, it's just removal it's of, going a, to be 20, of a... It's going to be 22, 23. It will be? Yes. Awesome. Mr. Tagg is shaking his head, yes. Yeah. Great. Who that said, makes more sense. Who said 24, may have been an error. The gentleman, the, the um, advisor to the club had said, he did say 23, 24, but, oh. but I, I apologize. But perhaps it was an error, and we're looking at 22, 23. Correct, Mr. Tagg? Thank you. That makes more sense. It sounded pretty simple, just a removal and a replace right. as long as, you know, it wasn't supply yeah, chain. Over the existing. Over the existing. Yeah. 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 Great. Mr. Chirrell, is that the one, though, that we won't be getting the, uh, the actual uh, units until the fall? Is that, is, I don't think we, the grant doesn't come to us until the fall. Well, we get 5,000 now <coughs> and we get 5,000 so we'll later. Half okay. Half I might be thinking of the other grant. There was a, the 44,000 grant. I don't remember. So I might be misspeaking. So my mistake as well. Mr. Retsky, did you have a question? Thank you. Thank you. Just, um, I, w I also was going to ask, is it six? We're all very interested in clean water. Is it six um, water stations uh, for the 5,000 or for the total of 10,000? For, for 10,000. Yeah, they're expensive. That's yeah. what I thought. Um, and when we ended up getting positive lead testing. Was that because we put filters on those 
specific when we got problem positive, areas we got, we where, where we got clean i'm sorry yeah. yes we we had put mitigation er, uh efforts in place and then and then we retested and we were filters work yeah last question so you mentioned the security measures and so first of all i think it's great to lean on the professionals and ask them from their perspective you know what do, what do they think they need and what would be helpful to them um so just my question is i think we have 17 plus uh, the director how many do all of them or how many of them carry uh weapons yeah. Yeah, sure. i was just curious okay i just happened to yeah just happened to know um it is my understanding and i'm looking at mr jersky so he'll shake his head whether i'm right or wrong we currently have one two three four two at the high school two four five five i believe we have five that do not carry because they currently were already here when we changed our process. Mr. Jersky, am I correct? Okay, so we have five. And what's, uh, just to let you know also, because um, I believe it's gonna be on the next board report, we have three through, mm -hmm. through retirement and resignation. We have three that will be replaced and I'll be working with Mr. Piero, we've already had the conversation, um, to be doing the interviews. And we do believe that it is the right thing to do with going with uh, retired police because the armed guards is the way to go. Right. And if I, I just wanted to make one quick comment, if I may, only because to Ms. Bora, I think the other thing in addition to Strauss' esme, which is important to say, because I think you were really more concerned about the policy updates with security more than any other area, am I correct? Yes. Just so you know, I want to let you know that our current, um, that our Director of Security works constantly in collaboration, I would say almost daily, with the Monroe Township Police Department, as well as the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office and the Middlesex County, there's another term, I'm going to say it wrong, but Middlesex County, it's an, I know because I've gone to the meetings, or an overall Middlesex County where all the directors go and that's how they get the knowledge of the training. So if the state would, was to make a change, even before it becomes a statute change, a policy change, or anything to do with the code, the director of security would know and we'd be able to make that change. And I'm very proud, and I've been here long enough to make the statement, I was here during all the tragedies that happened in the other states. We are really in great shape as far as security. I think that's why we were so quick to be able to respond to all of the concerns. And I do think it has a lot to do with the relationship between our director of security, who's also a school specialist, which will be approved as a school special in July. That's what Ms. Arminio was talking about. That's required as per the state of New Jersey. They work directly in concert with the police department and Middlesex County. That makes sense. The, that's the law enforcement liaison. Correct. Right. And, that and then there's the, another there's one. They do both. Two. Correct. Ms. Reiner? I just had a couple of quick questions. Um, first of all, I completely agree. My nephew's in North Carolina. They have secretaries handling their security, and secretaries are wonderful, but I wouldn't want that responsibility. So kudos to the administration and security for really you know, putting that at the forefront and keeping everybody safe. Um, regards to the stop gap in the auditorium, um, and you know, re re I guess converting the pit orchestra area, recognizing that that specific space is not utilized um, however, I'm wondering how often the high school auditorium itself is utilized that then these individuals would then have to be, um, I guess, moved to a different place or have the services either rescheduled or postponed because there is a lot of um, equipment that goes along with OTPT and, you know, having been someone who was relocated teaching in the auditorium when things would come in, I know that that can become a complication. So prior to putting this forth as a recommendation, I went ahead and had a conversation with Mr. Moraldo, who's the supervisor of that particular area, and I had a conversation with Dr. Higgins, who's the principal, just to confirm would there be any type of nuisance, inconvenience, or at any time has that area ever been utilized before we go ahead and take away something that, you know, is part of our crown jewel, which is part of our high school. So just to answer a few questions, number one, it has never been utilized. It is only a storage space. Number two, the area in which that we are converting, they would have access. I know what you're saying. I, they're not jumping it down into the pit to bring the things. And I'm not being rude. No, 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 I understand. Uh, so the access would not necessarily deter anyone who would be in the stage or the auditorium area to answer your question. And the last thing which was not asked but I would like to share is that because it's a stopgap project and we always look with stopgaps, and I know this from the middle school, the way it's going to be done, if not would we pass the referendum, there might be an opportunity to convert that back depending upon the type of the construction they use. We work directly with, with Mr. Tague and directly with um, DIG group who will then make the suggestions because it could be a three year stop gap and then right. in the fourth year we could have, a, we could have the extensions that we need. So to so confirm, this is the pit orchestra area under the stage. Correct. So if there were performances or speakers coming into the 
actual would auditorium, exactly. then they would still right. be able to continue courses. That's correct. And, and of okay. course, just like anything that we've utilized in the middle school, we have quality acoustic panels, which we utilize in many, many of the classrooms when we did stop gap projects, and they truly do work. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Mr. Trill, real quick, I, I believe we asked this at the meeting. They can anything that's going to go in for that program can be removed easily if the necessity was to use that space for something else. Yes. That was discussed there, and we were told affirmatively that that would happen. I agree. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else on any other committees to report? Yep. Mr. Nikitinsky. On uh, June 8th, we had our personnel committee. It was a long agenda. It should be an hour, but it's not. Um, we reviewed the usual vacancy list, exit survey. Um, we reviewed the contract for the assistant superintendent. We reviewed the technology department stipend overview, overview which is on the agenda. If anyone needs a copy, I have it. Um, the SWIMP team stipend proposal. Um, Consonia records, which Ms. Chanley reviewed already. Um, we had recommendations for elementary principals, which we had for Brookside, we had 72 applicants. Um, six were interviewed. For Mill Lake, we had 43 applicants. Six candidates were interviewed. And for, that was that. And then for the supervisor of elementary, we had 97 applicants and three candidates were interviewed. Uh, we also reviewed the director of, um, security and that was had 14 applicants and four candidates were interviewed um, and then we reviewed uh, the confidential secretary posting job description and uh, the custodian of uh, Oprah's job description which she touched that so okay any Does questions anybody have any questions Ms. Arminia uh, yes, in terms of the interviews, thank you, Mr. Nikotinsky, because that's what I was hoping for, so we know how many people are so actually just being... for you. Thank you, and for the and for the public, I'm sure. Uh, so, are there committees interviewing? Who are the interviewees? Uh, interviewers. interviewers. The interviewers were myself and Dr. Lyman for all of those personnel items. That's correct. And they were present the the candidates for recommendation were presented at the policy uh, at the. Personnel committee? That's correct. Other questions? Okay, do we have one more committee to report? Mr. Belko? Did you go already? Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have any other committees? No, seeing no more committees. Okay. Uh, our next item on the agenda is the public forum for agenda items only. Anybody wishing to speak to the agenda, please come, state your name for the record, name and address, and you have four minutes to address the board. Good evening, Betty Sabarito, uh, to Barrymore Drive. I'm honored to thank the board and administration for um, presenting all of our students with awards today. That was really nice to see and that we're focusing on students. I also wanted to speak to uh, the agenda item of the resignation of Ms. Magnoli and I wanted to give her kudos. So I worked with Ms. Magnoli for six years as both of my sons were in that school. She worked diligently with myself as a parent and as CPEG leader to address um, special education issues. She's going to be missed. I know this was a personal decision which is better for her and her family but Ms. Magnoli if you're still here you're fantastic and we will miss you. And the other thing I wanted to bring out is it's really disappointing to see when board members, every time something is put on an agenda or you're trying to pass it for approval for special education, it's always about the why and what are we taking away. You know, your special education students are your students too. And to be worried about, and I'm not saying the band is not important, it's absolutely important and it is, you know, wonderful for this district. But to be worried about a space that could possibly take away from gen ed students that you're using now to provide services that are legally required for students, that's really disappointing. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? Brian Fabiano, 19 Patricia Place. Uh, first, I'd like to start off by uh, 
publicly uh, offering my condolences to uh, Mr. Rutsky in the passing of his father uh, very recently, father-in-law, sorry, very recently, uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, and I would also echo, um, you know, the last speaker, great to see, you know, the year end here with, um, you know, the kids being recognized tonight. I think this is why everybody gets involved and why we come out to express our concerns and, and you know, also uh, support for a lot of things you guys are doing. Uh, I'll run through this. Um, I don't know if you're going to answer as you go, uh, but uh, in regards to the principal hiring, I was wondering why committees weren't set up like previously in the past. I know certain board members here uh, participated in committees. Um, why wasn't that set up for the principals? You can go through all your questions and we'll okay. see if we Okay. So traditionally there were always committees, but there were no committees this time around um, for the principals, so that seems like a change. Um, in regards to OPRA, again, I'll, I'll talk, uh, I'll bring it back to what I said last meeting. Uh, Mr. Gagliardi already said the requests weren't up, uh, so I'm wondering what's changed. Also, in regards to legal fees, um, I have yet to hear about uh, the special investigation that I was asked to participate in January. I was contacted by Mrs. Skirby uh, to be a part of an investigation for uh, any wrongdoing in the superintendent search. I know uh, Mrs. Prewster and others in the community were involved as well. I'd like to know what the cost of that is to date and what the outcome of it is, uh, since we have not heard about it. Um, and that's in regards to the attorney bills. Uh, in regards to uh, the superintendent evaluation, I'm wondering if the uh, board will be taking into consideration or if the, super, or if the evaluation will be done uh, before the results of the uh, Office of Administrative Law Court case is completed. It's my understanding that Mrs. Chanley was referred to the Office of Administrative Law and a hearing is going to be taking place. It's a two-day hearing. It's docket number 96-5. Slash 22, uh, and that is in front of the administrative law uh, judge. I didn't notate the name, so I was wondering, will that be uh, taking place, or will that be part of uh, the evaluation, and if there's any color in terms of when that's going to take place? Uh, I was happy to hear about the uh, security um, guards and potentially maybe adding additional security guards to the table or to the school district. I hope that the district will. Um, uh, consider bringing in additional officers. Uh, I think that's a good step in the right direction of protecting our children. Uh, lastly, there was mention of a lawsuit uh, in the community uh, by the uh, community member in the finance committee, uh, and uh, members, I believe, commented that it was costing the community money and you know these frivolous lawsuits, etc. What I find uh, funny is uh, Mrs. Skirby in January and December, and I'll quote two quotes said try and sue us, M. Effer, uh, and I'm not afraid of, I'm not afraid of poop. Uh, when they sue us, the insurance pays, not the taxpayers. So I'm wondering, in terms of lawsuits, has your position changed? Because it sounds like you welcomed lawsuits. Now that lawsuits are on the table based on your conduct, you're saying that taxpayers are out of line uh, by bringing such lawsuits. So I'm just wondering uh, if you still stand by your welcoming of, of lawsuits, because typically you wouldn't see in the real world, if someone worked for a company, you wouldn't find employees uh, welcoming lawsuits against uh, the company. Uh, lastly, um, regards to the OPRA process, I'd like to put it on the record, or I'd like to ask on the record, you probably won't answer it. Are you aware of any OPRA records that are being falsified, information withheld, or any discrimination that is taking place? Thank you. Thank you, is there anybody else wishing to speak? Good evening, George Gunkelman, Five Kelly Court, Monroe. On page 72, item number uh, 34, um, SEC uh, matter. I, I talked about this at the last meeting. You assume that we all know what these initials mean. You can do a whole paragraph on the other items, but let's call out what it is. It just makes it more intelligible for us who are trying to sort through what's happening here. On the same page, 
um, item F under the bill list, list grant funds. What is the source of these grant funds? I'd like to know. There's a number, a whole list of things on page 72 of the agenda uh, with different uh, grants um, to, that are being accepted. But it doesn't say what the source is. In fact, it doesn't say what they're for. It just says IDEA and ESEA. Again, someone's assuming that is intelligible to the rest of us. It's not. Um, on page 76, it talks about um, uh, under item KK, tax payment schedule. What does the district pay tax on? I'm curious to know. On um, page 79, $3,559 under section one and $59,500. Very specific number, but no line items. Um, so is, uh, are there line items or is it a lump sum that can be allocated any way the purchasing officer decides to allocate it? It um, seems a little bit loose uh, to people who might be reading three, you know, in excess of three million dollars uh, for a number of different items that are identified, but no line items for the categories which makes it a little bit hard for us to understand and evaluate what's going on. Um, sometimes we would like to be able to do that. You know, and I'd like to say that historically I thought that both our business administrators and facilities manager have, to my knowledge, done a good job. Um, I'm sure there have been exceptions. But generally, um, uh, I'm not being critical when I ask these questions about what's happened in the past. I just think more detail would be helpful for the public to understand what's going on. The, the other thing, uh, there's a section, and I forget exactly where it was, that spells out under, under the uh, part that was going to be for the, the purchasing officer, uh, some of the language. I, I just think that these purchases, the language should be tightened up uh, with not to exceed numbers and things like that that make it a little bit tidier and, and more focused as to what the limits and, and we should know how much can be switched from light item to light item because it's, uh, uh, it often indicates sloppiness. Um, and the, uh, the one other thing, and I'm almost out of time, but I'll ask it. it I would like to know what the cost overall of school sec security is. And it's not because I'm critical of it, uh, far from it. It's just that the country as a whole is spending a fortune on security, and I think we need to. Uh, there's more than enough brutal evidence that we need to. But on the other hand, there's an item there where I think that we've thought of in the community and it's come up here where even where we've talked about, oh, all the builders are building more and they're not paying any impact fees. Well, I think our gun manufacturers and the people who sell guns should be paying impact fees because the taxpayer is spending a fortune and trying to protect our children and our citizens. And the people that are causing the need for that are not pain. Thank, Thank you. you. Sarah Aziz, 3 Lancelot Drive. 
I'm here to speak about the superintendent evaluation which is on the agenda. It has come to my attention that the contract of acting superintendent Sherry Shanley appears to violate state law because it, because it is missing a material clause. According to NJ statute, quote unquote, any contract entered into pursuant to NJSA 18A colon 17-15 shall provide for an evaluation pursuant to this section and may provide for an additional evaluation criteria or procedures which shall not be inconsistent with the regulations of the state board. In other words, a valid superintendent contract would consider would, would contain a specific section addressing the superintendent evaluation. There is no such clause in Ms. Shanley's contract, whereas the contract of former superintendent, Dr. Dory Alvik, required that she be evaluated after 120 days after the execution of her contract. However, Ms. Shanley's contract does not contain the legal requirement that she be evaluated at all, and her contract was extended without an evaluation. The superintendent should be evaluated based on whether he or she met district goals, and these goals are typically published online. However, the acting superintendent and the Monroe Township Board of Education never developed district goals for the 2021-2022 school year. Even if the board initiated some type of evaluation at this point, it would not be sufficient because it would not meet the state standards and contract law. Additionally, without the provision for a superintendent evaluation in Chanley's contract, this means the board does not have to evaluate her using state approved standards. This is another violation of New Jersey statute 18A colon 17 dash 20.3. It says, quote unquote, every local board of education having a superintendent shall evaluate the performance of the superintendent at least once a year. Each evaluation shall be in writing, a copy shall be provided to the superintendent, and the superintendent and the board shall meet to discuss the findings. The evaluation shall be based on the goals and objectives of the district and the responsibilities of the superintendent. The contracts of both former superintendents, Dr. Alvik and Dr. Mr. Goodall, both refer specifically to consideration and includes a basis upon which they get evaluated. Quote unquote, consideration is the backbone of a contract. It means that each party must provide something of value to the other party as designated by the contract terms. Without, without consideration, a contract is not binding. Chanley's contract, which has no end date, does not include any reference to her to her evaluation, there, therefore implying that there's no criteria that she needs to abide by in order to get paid and renewed. Chanley is not contractually obligated to provide anything of value to the district because the contract does not mention the word consideration. There's no consideration from Chanley, yet the taxpayers have to foot the bill for her compensation and benefits package that cost $254,000. Ms. Chanley is contractually unaccountable and therefore this contract appears to violate both New Jersey law and general contractual principles. Also, the contract makes it clear that tuition reimbursement is contingent upon the acquisition of a doctoral degree. Dif given that there's no evidence that Ms. Chanley has achieved a doctor or is even pursuing one now, will the board demand that she reimburse taxpayers for the $38,000 that she's collected in tuition reimbursement over the past 20 years? This contract precludes the possibility of a just and fair superintendent evaluation and superintendent search. How how does someone so poorly qualified compete with qualified candidates with legitimate evaluations? According to transcripts of the board member training released from the NJSBA, it's clear that the only board members who received thorough training on superintendent evaluations are Paul Rudsky and Michelle Arminio, both of whom did not vote to extend Ms. Shanley's contract. The remaining board members received the bare minimum of this training and have endeavored to appoint Ms. Shanley permanent superintendent against the direction of the New Jersey Department of Education despite the vocal and growing community outcry. Again, I ask, how can the board justify their decisions? Thank you. Awesome. Yes, Mr. Gagliardi, can you please address the many falsities of those comments? Um, if, if I may, Madam President, I'll just pick a few. Um, <laughs> so were I a member of the board or the public, I would ask how could it be that a attorney who's been representing school boards for 30 years and the Department of Education, which approved Ms. Shanley's contract, um, submit to the board for consideration a contract that has all of these uh, legal flaws? And the answer is none of that, none of what you heard applies. The reason none of what you heard applies is because what you heard applies to the contract of a permanent superintendent. So if, for example, we went through the section of Title 18A that um, was mentioned, you would see that in order for the contract to be lawful, it has to be of, in, of duration no less than 
uh, three and no more than five years. Well, this contract obviously just goes a couple months at a time. How could that be? And that's because none of what you heard applies. It applies to permanent superintendent contracts. So the reason this contract was submitted to the state for approval and got approved is because it's not a superintendent's contract. It's a contract for an acting superintendent. So you can't, for example, there was a reference made to setting annual goals. Well, if a contract is three months in length, how would you set annual goals? So there are criteria for superintendent's contracts, and the criteria you heard apply to a superintendent's contract, but not to this contract. So the reason that this was submitted to the board and to the county and to the Department of Education, and it was approved repeatedly, is because none of what you heard applies to this contract. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam President. Thank you. Is there anybody else wishing to speak? Hello, uh, Pradeep Mela, 4J Plus. Good evening, everybody. I missed out a little earlier part. Um, I have a few questions. Number one is the personal item B, Y, and B, Z, the appointment of school principals for elementary principals for Brookside School and Mill Lake School. So my question is like, there are people out crying that there is no uh, evaluation committee or interview committee or anything. So my question to board is like, or, or superintendent is like, how you guys are like selecting the principals? Or is there a standard procedure? Or do we, did we reinvent any new process recently? Do you have other questions? Would you like yes. To? Are you guys like following the same procedure for the years that is established or did you guys started any new process how you are picking up school principals or how you are appointing new school principals? Is that your question? Is That's that your a question. question. Yeah. Okay. You can. So there is no requirement as per state statute of law, and you can correct me please, uh, Mr. Gagliardi, that it requires a committee. In the past, I've been actually participant on many of those committees, and I, I cannot speak to specifics because it is a personnel item, but I will let you know that both myself and Dr. Lehman um, had a conversation with the personnel committee, and they felt that we were qualified to make the decisions about who would be the next principals. We went through each and every application. He went through all the supervisors personally. I went through each and application for each principalship and it was a total of, I think, 47 and 72, 46 and 72, personally. And I looked for specific criteria before we even bring them in for an interview. Many of the people that did apply had no administrative experience, so they were immediately not utilized as part of the okay. candidacy pool. We then went uh, forward with specific questions that were created uh, based upon uh, questions that are considered part of the school leadership uh, parameters, where Dr. Lehman and I went through them to look, because we're not just looking for a manager, we're looking for an instructional leader. We looked to see, um, projects, opportunities, activities, and various different um, um, uh, ventures, for lack of a better term, that the principals were involved in. We had them come back for a second round and asked them to create transition plans in which they uh, put forth how they would be um, transitioning and that would handle everything from security, um, child safety, staff safety, management of the building, uh, instructional practices, um, children of low achieving means, uh, children of high achieving means, children that um, had, were special education and so on and so forth. And we did an, an exhaustive analysis of the applicants and I was, I was given the ability as the acting superintendent along with the um, assistant superintendent to make the decisions and I feel, that, I feel that I made excellent decisions for the district and committees um, can work in a positive way and they could also work in a negative way because when committees come together and you try and bring in the community, which I am totally respective of, um, sometimes um, there are ulterior motives. Sometimes I had no ulterior motives in the people that were selected. I can be happy to verify in closed session if it was appropriate or anywhere else once they become public and we can speak on the matters of personnel once they are no longer personal to say why these people were selected based upon all of the people that we interviewed. And the questions were the same for all applicants and those that were brought back were required to do the same presentation so that we had equality or parity, I should say is a better word. We had parity for all of the applicants. Okay, great, thank you. Um, the next question is like, there are a lot of small, small projects or enhancements for the school's infrastructure all over this like 50 pages booklet. So is there a consolidated list by school, what you guys are like enhancing in terms of infrastructure or any projects that you are taking up that can be published to the community so that will be useful for us, like what is where <coughs> the actual work is happening? 
Is your question in regards to building facilities or regards yes. to curriculum instruction? Building and facilities. So I would have to have a conversation, and I, I would not have it tonight, but I'd be happy to bring it back um, next month. I, I believe that Mr. Tague ha does have a running list, which is a proper term, I would say, of various different um, projects that are I don't want to say on a wish list, but I'm going to say on a wish list. So when you quote me, you can quote me wish list. Um, so I'm going to say on a wish list of things that we know we would really like, and then there are things that are a priority. So we prioritize and we use the um, yeah, we use the expertise. We, we, we want to see like not not just wish list or approved list, like, but what actually. Well, uh, that's what I was going to finish summer. saying. I was yeah. going to finish saying yes. Thank you, Miss. Uh, um, okay. Um, I want to say your name correctly. So um, we can um, discuss with the BG&T committee, because I think it would be appropriate with the committee chairperson, to designate what we um, can go ahead and publish. I, I, I don't see that being a problem at all. Okay. Thank you. Um, there is a last one, which there is an award is going to for next year, uh, Internet Service Provider as a Comcast. Can we get the time started, please? Thank you. Okay. Uh, the Comcast has been awarded as part of the next year in internet provider and the services. Uh, we have like uh, in the la in the past few years we have a couple of incidents that uh, DDoS attacks and there are some happened and we ask like because of we are part of some Middlesex County plan or some program that's why we need to go with what our county is giving. So did did it consider that are we going to go independently or are we part of same? Middlesex schools consortium and everything uh, are we going with that or did we plan uh, to mitigate any future attacks in this part okay I'm gonna just he's gonna speak on the attacks but I will be happy to ask Ms. Feldman and you can come back with that question or if you want to email me separately sure. regarding that particular question because I'm not really sure if we're part of I almost like a consortium yeah. or if we go on our own I don't know but I'll be happy to jot down the question okay thank you so we had a security audit um, in terms of internet safety and security, and there's been kind of no cost things that we've done in terms of two factor authentication, expanding who does that um, to you know harden our our potential yeah, last access few, and things. Yeah. But we the also last few incidents are not integrated like initiated from inside, it is outside attacks. Correct. So in terms of DDoS specifically, um, we've upgraded some of our core equipment and we still are fielding DDoS attacks, but they are having minimal to no impact on our daily operations. Okay. Um, and, and that's the update. Um, in terms of more details and specifics, Mr. Feldman could give what devices and things like that, but it's, they're still occurring, um, but they are not like they were at the beginning of last school year where they were crippling us. Okay, thank you. Peter Tefano, 10 Catherine Street. <clears throat> it, uh, it's very upsetting to me that uh, on a day like today, uh, someone would get up here, not to congratulate, you know, Kathy Dillon for her excellent work in, <clears throat> in our district, for her retirement, you know, our special needs athletes, uh, people who volunteered for that, uh, our honor, soci honor society recipients, our 2022 graduating class, and many of the other beautiful things going on in our district. Um, congratulate maybe our staff and our, our administrators for the beautiful job they do educating our kids. No. We have somebody that comes up here meeting after meeting after meeting like a nightmare. It's like a, a reoccurring nightmare. And they spew four minutes of complete bull crap every meeting all to attack a 20-year veteran of this school district who has dedicated her life to educating our children. That is the only goal a certain person has in this room. Meeting after meeting, the obsession is frightening. If I were you, I would get a restraining order, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, for what? Why is she attacking you? Because you seek a better position? because you're not her choice? She says the community is up in arms that you want this position. Well, I don't see the community up in arms. I see one or two crazy people up in arms. That's not the community I belong to. And I'm kind of embarrassed for them. And I really hope that you're given that position because you earned it and you deserve it. And the few big mouths in this town that spew garbage, they don't matter. Everybody else does. 
Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Michael Oleski, 50 Mayberry Avenue. Uh, have two questions. Uh, one fairly easy one, one much more difficult one. Uh, first one, again, of course, this is probably not the first time you've heard this question. Uh, is there some reason that you don't use uh, maybe an auditorium in the high school or the middle school for these presentations? Uh, you know, the presentations we had today, which were very nice. I don't even have kids in the high school. I enjoyed it. And the other meeting that I remember enjoying it as much was the last time you had them. Uh, but uh, the room was jam-packed. And also it was very hard to hear outside this area where these focus speakers were. So I just want to ask you that if you haven't thought about it, uh, yeah, please give it some thought for next year. Uh, that was the easy one. Now the next one, much more difficult. And believe me, I'm not trying to throw darts and any plan that you're putting together right now for the referendum. But I'll ask the question so that you're prepared to answer it uh, maybe now or at a later date. The new plan for the high school, I guess we've gone from, what, six to 13 uh, classroom units, um, and I guess some other various modifications to the high school. Uh, that package of uh, modifications, are they gonna address all of our unhoused students in the high school? Uh, and if not, uh, I guess what's next? And when, of course, too. So, uh, yeah, that last question, yeah, you can save that, yeah, but obviously be prepared to answer it for, for all of us, okay? Thank you very much. Mr. Oleski, um, just so you know, um, I do Thank you very much for your input. I know that in the past, because I have been here so long, we did do a lot of the presentations in both either the middle school or the high school. So perhaps I'll have the conversation with the board leadership. If it's something moving forward, perhaps in like February, or I believe we do something in September, if it's more convenient and more comfortable, we could easily do that as far as the Performing Arts Center is concerned, whether it be the middle school or the high school. So thank you. The second thing is we went from six classrooms to 17. So what happened was at our initial presentation, we wanted to move forward in order to make the April 2023 deadline of a referendum. And in order to do that, we had to make some um, educated guesses. And at the time, we did not have all the demographers report information. So therefore, we were looking at, we thought it would be heavier, uh, heavier handed needed in the middle school. And after the demographers report came in, we were then able to ascertain that we were able to drop what we're calling phase B or phase two. I don't remember the exact terminology. I want to say phase B, I believe, or phase two. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Bora. Phase two. And then we were able to look in um, juggling the utilization of space and therefore what the cost would be to put it out in the high school. It just so happened with no actual intention that you have 17 new classrooms in the middle school, 17 new classrooms in the, uh, in the high school, and of course, Applegott stands with the renovations and um, the renewal. Um, as far as um, the, the question that you asked about um, all of the unhoused students, it is uh, my responsibility to put forth the recommendation and then to work in collaboration with the Board of Education as well as um, Dr. Lehman and Mr. Tague. And I believe uh, if we were to ha unhouse, if we were to house every unhoused student, we would come up with a referendum, and I don't want to use a number because then I'm going to be quoted and I'm not, I'm, I don't have the exact information. I will let you know that it would far exceed the, um, av the range of 95 to 105 million dollars. That statement I will make. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Ravi Cherubu, uh, 14 Bond Court. Um, I just noticed your board uh, out here and want to congr congr congratulate you on that. I also want to mention that I'm the president of Monroe Education Foundation. And uh, in, the, in the past, a few of the members out here, they mentioned you are a very nice person. And I would say that, Mr. Shanley, you are a very nice person. And a lot of members in this board, in this room, have facilitated us to donate more than $16,000 in programs and scholarships. And we've been asking the board to give us some chance to, to speak about it. Uh, and so far, we haven't gotten any, but it doesn't matter. We just want to do the work for the, for the kids. And having said that, I, I, I would say you're a very nice person. And I do want to address um, uh, this, this gentleman's question and the gentleman before mention, mentioning about uh, month after month after month, we come and ask you, why are we doing that? We are doing for the sake of our kids' futures. Why is there a lawsuit? It's, it's, my, it's my turn. Why is there a lawsuit? It's, it's because we want to have a qualified superintendent for the board. 
for, for the school. Why, why are people concerned about Mrs. Shanley becoming superintendent? If in a financial industry or a medical industry, someone has deliberately uh, um, misstated their credentials, they will go to jail. They will be arrested. They will be debarred from the industry. I work in the financial industry. Here, it is the kids' futures at risk. So we are asking the board to have a properly qualified superintendent. Do you guys have a goal plan in place? I've gone through the uh, web website. I've not seen any goal plan in place. Do we have a goal plan for the board and for the district? I think we've done plenty. Mm -hmm. Do you? I guess not. So last year, last July, I asked Ms. Arminio if you guys had a plan for a new school. And she admitted that you guys were in very early stages of even planning for a new school. So I have no idea what your goals are. It, to me, sitting on this side, it looks like you guys are putting politics over kids' futures. And there is no evidence to support that you guys are doing acting everything in the interest of the kids. You speak to people out in New Jersey, in, in New Jersey, this, this is a joke out here. So I, there is no evidence that you guys are doing the very best for the school district. And I would like to hear what you guys are doing line by line, maybe put on, a, on, on your website saying that here are all the achievements that we have, here are the goals that we have. We have no business administrator. You have the finance meeting with what, the BA. How, how are you guys doing that? There are so many questions that we have. And it looks very chaotic for us. So that's the reason why this gentleman and all these people are asking, and I would ask month after month after month, what are you guys doing? Thank you. Doug, Doug Poy for Tamarack Court. I am troubled by the inconsistency that both our president and our superintendent show toward the public when they come up and speak at the podium. You allow some people to go over the four minutes. Mr. Poy, is this an agenda item? Yes, it is. Which item? Which item? The public session. This is, this is it's the public agenda session. Items. That's on your agenda. And that's what I'm speaking to. You, you choose to answer some people's questions. You tell other people, go ahead and ask all of your questions, and then you don't answer those questions or comment on them. I think that kind of inconsistency is not fair to our public, and I want to draw that to your, to your attention. Also, you allow some members of the public to attack other speakers. I don't think that is good for public discourse. In terms of the water refill stations, I applaud that, that effort by our student club that I believe that brought that uh, grant, made that grant possible. And I would hope that in the new construction, in any new construction that we have, that uh, those refill stations will be considered to be added. It's a great step towards sustainability. It's a great step toward educating our students in terms of conservation. On page 73, item Q of the Business Administrator's Report, you are appointing the acting, an acting purchasing agent over the period of time from April 27th of this year to April 27th of next year. This would seem, at least to me, this suggests that the Board of Education is projecting that the suspension of Mr. Gorski could run for another year, or almost. By statute, Mr. Gorski is being paid, but he's not on the job. That is a waste of taxpayer money. And any time in previous public sessions when I've asked you for what is happening, is there an investigation going on, when will Mr. Gorski be returned to, this, to his position? You don't answer. I don't expect you to answer tonight either. But at least be consistent 
in responding to the various people who come to this podium to speak. Thank you. Thank you. And as you know, we are not at liberty to discuss personnel issues. And when we do have people coming up month after month with their slanderous statements and lies, it does not dignify a response. People that come up here with actual questions of how this district runs, agenda items, those are questions that I will entertain and I will answer. But things of the nature to come up here with misrepresentation only to attack board members and to attack our administration, it doesn't dignify any type of response. I'm sorry. And thank you, Madam President, for using your discretion appropriately. Is anybody else wishing to speak? Seeing none, we will close the public forum. The next item on the agenda is the Assistant Superintendent's Report. Dr. Lehman? Sure. I just wanted to uh, acknowledge everyone for their achievements, uh, many of which were in present today, all the students that came, all the athletic achievements, academic achievements. We have a big day a week from Friday. Um, we have the high school graduation. Uh, throughout next week, we have moving up ceremonies for elementary schools. We have the graduation at the middle school. So this is an exciting time of year, and there's a lot of joyous occasions. And I think uh, you know it's a busy, busy time of year for us all. But I think it's uh, well worth you know expending all that time and, and things because our students are absolutely amazing. The faculty and staff here do tremendous things with the with the students, providing opportunities for them to excel. And uh, it's just an overall congratulations to them. And uh, a short report tonight, I just want to invite everyone to an event that we're having tomorrow night. This is a plug for Mr. Schneider's program. Um, it is a grant-funded program. So it was postponed from 2019. Um, and it is, let's see, it is a percussion documentary called Talking Sticks. Um, it's going to be screened here at the high school. Um, and it's going to be followed by a world premiere performance of a brand new percussion ensemble piece that's play, uh, performed by the Monroe Township High School Honors Percussion Ensemble. And it's, that piece was commissioned and written specifically for our high school percussion group. Uh, it's an outstanding group of musicians. They perform very often. I'm sure we've all probably seen them. Um, they often perform outside in the uh, annex and things. But this is a special night for them. It's something that's long overdue. This is something that we had to delay for COVID, but we can finally catch up. And this is probably one of the last lingering COVID-related things that we will uh, move forward with. So tomorrow night, 6.30 in the high school pack. It's open to the entire community, and uh, we hope to see you there. Thank you. Our next item is our superintendent's report. Mrs. Chanley. Thank you very much. So um, I don't remember which member of the public. Um, it definitely wasn't one of the people that um, continually bash me bash me uh, from a point where I, I sit here and remain silent, but I'm going to make the statement that um, one of the people made a comment and I'm going to answer to it. Um, at no time did, was there ever any deliberate malice of forethought, inappropriate intention in any way to deceive anyone at any time. And I, you left the oh, anybody. I'm recorded, I'm, I'm on YouTube, there's a channel for me. Whatever they need to do, they, they take pictures, whatever you need to do. Um, I'm here because I believe in Monroe, I'm here because I'm a res resident of Monroe, I'm here because I know that I can do great things, and I'm going to um, start off my board report because it is the last board meeting of the academic school year. Because the school year officially closes on June 31st, and a new school year below, below, begins on July 1st. So I just jotted down a few things. And I would like to compliment the Board of Education and in consort with the Board of Education as well as my assistant superintendent, who I refer to as my right hand, and I'm his right hand. We have done the following things since I have taken over on November 10th, 12th, 13th. I'm not sure. I am, I'm sure we can go on someone's page and find out the exact date. Um, that being said, I have to be flip every once in a while and be true to who I am. We have been able to have stopgap projects that have occurred within this school year as well as being approved to start immediately. We are in the process of having a multi-sensory um, classroom, which I am so excited about. It has been on my agenda item since I was the principal for almost five years in the middle school. It has not been uh, brought to fruition until I had the opportunity to uh, be the person who was able to bring it to fruition. 
It's going to be a wonderful environment with um, soft benches and mirrors, which directly relate to self-esteem. And there's going to be um, a swing, for lack of a better term, that's going to be in there. It's going to be a, a fabulous place. Additionally, we are converting one of the current um, resource classrooms, which was part of the culinary arts program, which I had the pleasure of being part of when I did all the renovations in the middle school, I want to say 11 years ago, which is going to allow an opportunity to have a, a space, a positive space for when our children who have some special needs and respectfully, as an adult, we all could use a space that we can go to. And my rocking chair, that was my rocking chair um, for my children, and like I said, we could probably go to the page on the Facebook to find out how many kids I have and when they were born. And um, I rocked my children in that rocking chair, and I asked my kids if they would mind if I gave it to the middle school to place it in that room, because that place is near and dear to my heart, because it's my school. I created it. So those are uh, three things. Um, expansion of the special education programs, we are very excited to be able to say that we're going to be having a self-contained program, which is very well needed on the other side of town, and it's gonna be in Woodland, and I believe the individual who's going to be approved is on the agenda this evening for that program. And why is that a big deal for those of you that care about kids? Because we currently have children that live on the side of Oak Tree and Applegott that sit on a bus for 45 minutes to an hour and 20 every day for no other reason that we didn't have a home for them. We didn't have a teacher for them. We didn't have a program for them. So under my current tenure, and that is the correct word, even though I'm not permanent, um, in consort with this Board of Education support, which I think is incredible, and once again, working collaboratively with Dr. Lehman, we now have a special education program that's going into Woodland. We are also taking an art room. I don't even need to look at my list because this is something that I live and breathe. And we're also taking an art room in Barkley Brook. We are totally psyched, and I'm going to use that unprofessional word because I'm psyched. And we are totally excited that we're going to be able to take this room, put it in a bathroom, a toileting room, put it in an appropriate sink, and make a current space, once again, for our very well-needed self-contained program where children can be treated as the human beings at the highest level that they should be treated. Not because we don't have space and we have to worry about other programs. We did something that has never been done in my 19 years here, and let me say this correctly because someone will look it up. 18 years, it will be starting my 19th year on August 21st of 2022 to be exact. For the first time ever, I have worked collaboratively on a weekly basis almost, I actually missed a phone call last week, I did not speak with her, to work with Dr. Villani for the first time ever that anybody has ever worked with Jamesburg, to bring the Jamesburg children who are Monroe children when they hit this high school to a place where they have a comfort level beginning in the eighth grade. For the first time ever, they became part of our culminating activity where we go every year except for the year of the dreaded C word, COVID, and they go to Frogbridge for the first time ever, and I am gonna take credit for this, in the history of Monroe Township, we have welcomed those children as we should. I should not be complimented, it is a should. It is something that should be done. And I continue to work with Dr. Villani, and I've spoken to Dr. Higgins of the middle school, it is something that we have now memorialized, and I'm proud to say it's gonna happen every year. And one comment I must make is when I meet with the superintendent's rep, excuse me, the acting superintendent's representatives, on a monthly basis, which is my best time. And I know that, I apologize, Ram, I, I'm gonna, and I don't know your last name, I just know your first name and your wife's name. Two of his children happen to be, by the way, I did not select them. Two of his children happen to be on that council. And we meet week, monthly and we talk about food and we talk about other things. One of the young ladies on that committee is a Jamesburg student, a Monroe student. She came from Jamesburg and she said, you know, Mrs. Chanley, my cousin went on that trip to Frogbridge and I wish they had that when I had to come to the high school because it took me almost the entire year to become like I felt, like a real Monroe student. But now these people are having an opportunity, these kids are having an opportunity to walk into the doors feeling like they are part of the Monroe community because they are. Not any less than any Monroe Township high school student. And lastly, I will end my patting on the back, which I have to tell you, the one, two, three, actually I counted, the 11 people of the 44,000 residents, the 7,000 children, the 1,200 employees, and approximately 14,000 parents that are part of our community. That is not all of the community saying who is appropriate and who is not appropriate. We will have a referendum that will be voted on in April of 2023. 
So I stand here, or rather I sit here, and I hold myself up high with my qualifications, and it is the Board of Education's decision to make whom they believe will be the appropriate permanent superintendent. In, in, in spite of the lying and disparaging comments at which I am abused on a daily basis. And I thank you so much for allowing me. And at this time, I will go directly to the superintendent's approval report. For a 10 member vote, it is recommended that the board approves the attached personal items A through BB. So moved. Second. Are there any questions? <coughs> I actually had a quick question um, in regards to, I guess, the home instruction, which isn't um, the 10 member vote. But um, I was just curious, seeing as how I know we had the uptick in, in COVID last month, so there was an increase in home instruction. Is this part of this vote? Well, it's part of the superintendent's report. I wasn't sure well, where we're it should in the go. middle of a motion right now okay. for, for that part. All right. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on that part? Okay. We'll go for a roll call. Mr. Rutsky? Yes. Mr. Chiarella? Yes. Ms. Ratner? Uh, yes, recuse on item letter E, subletter AL, um, and then item letter G, subletter C, D, and C, F. So noted. Ms. Bora? Yes to all. Ms. Fabiano? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Nikotinsky? Yes. Ms. Belko? Yes. Ms. Arminio? Yes. Ms. Bierman? Yes. Ms. Scurvy? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. For a nine member vote, it is recommended the board approve the attached personal items B, C through D, G. Motion. Second. Are there any questions? Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Ms. Ratner? Yes. Ms. Bora? Yes. Mr. Chiarella? Yes. Ms. Arminio? Yes. Ms. Belko? Yes. Mr. Nikotinsky? Yes. Ms. Fabiano? Yes. Ms. Bierman? Yes. Ms. Gerby? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. It is recommended the board approve the attached board action items A to N for a 10 member vote. Motion. Second. Are there any questions? Ms. Arminio. Okay, I just have to find it since I was working off the original agenda. I, so I. I don't know if E, F, and G are the same on the new agenda that came out today. Mm -hmm. I am not asking about specific people named in, on this agenda. I'm asking about the actual position. So the domestic violence contact, the affirmative action officer, and the anti-bullying coordinator. So whether they're, I'm sorry? That wasn't the question. Okay, the question is, are they mandated positions and is there additional special training for each position? I apologize, thank you very much, Ms. Arminio. I didn't mean to cut you off. The answer is they are yearly appointed, they are mandated requirements, and any training that is required, they will attend. Okay, and again, on, I just wanna make a comment on yearly appointments. I hope that that doesn't necessarily mean that every year they're gonna change. I think we should try to have some, especially for th these positions. So I'm sorry, did you answer, are they mandated? Yeah, okay, and there is special training when available or just special training in general? There is There are requirements of, uh, and, and it's, it's sometimes they're yearly, sometimes they're three years, sometimes they're five years, and it's, it's, it's mandated. Okay, and um, again, uh, my comment about yearly appointments, that's fine, I understand that they, that has to be, but I, w I think these are very serious appoint, uh, positions, and they should be uh, consistent and, uh, and kept within, you know. They are the same, the just, just to comment, I do agree with you when, when, it's, when it can well, be done. possible, And course. just so you know, they have been the same consistently, and I, I, I don't want to speak for the previous superintendents, but it is my understanding that they have been the same for a minimum of three years. Okay, because people need to be able to know who, these, who, who are these appointees and uh, feel comfortable with them on a regular basis, mm -hmm. so thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Just a question about N with the uh, Oprah secretary. So did I understand correctly, it's gonna be four and a quarter hours a day, so basically it's a part-time job with no benefits. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? All right, see now, may we have a roll call, please? 
Ms. Belko? Yes, recuse on letter H. Ms. Fabiano? Yes to all. Mr. Chiarella? Yes. Ms. Arminio? Yes. Ms. Ratner? Yes, abstain on N. N as in Nancy? Yes. Mr. Rutsky? Yes to all. Ms. Bora? Yes to all. Mr. Nikotinsky? Yes. Ms. Bierman? Yes. Ms. Gerby? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it is recommended the board approve the attached board action items O through R, and that is a nine member vote. Motion. Second. Are there any questions? Okay, may we have a roll call, please? Mr. Chiarella? Yes. Ms. Ratner? Yes. Ms. Belko? Yes. Ms. Fabiano? Yes. Ms. Bora? Yes. Mr. Nikotinsky? Yes. Ms. Arminio? Yes. Ms. Bierman? Yes. Ms. Gerby? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Business administrator? Yes. yes, the next item on the agenda is our business administrator's report. Mrs. Chanley is going to go through that. Certainly. This is for a 10 member vote. It is recommended the Board of Education approve the following board action items by roll call items A through RR. Motion. Second. So, any discussion? I may. Mr. Rutsky, yes. So, letter A1, just wanted to double check. So, with regards to the legal fees and the new contract, are those the same? Prices we had currently? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Ms. Ratner? Uh, yeah, I had a question. I noticed um, on the billing list um, and in some of the proposals that we do a lot of outsourcing for our, um, I guess, our observations and evaluations. Is like um, if students need an evaluation of certain things, is that if our in house personnel is unable to take care of it, or is that? exclusively handled that way so they're used as needed mm -hmm. and they're also used there are some dis students that are out of district and things and so but it's you know we do our evaluations in-house and then as needed um, there are some of these appointments are things that we can't do in-house um, they're special evaluations and things like that but we do what we can <coughs> in-house which is the majority of the work but these are if we don't have these on on retainer, uh, you know, on hold, and we need something, um, we have an issue, so. Of course. Yep. All right, and then my other question, um, and this is something I had noticed in a board meeting several years ago, and it's obviously been coming up on the bill list, um, but I was curious, um, I, I guess, Mrs. Shanley, if this has been a discussion maybe at the county superintendent's meeting, um, that there had been a discussion about the Haktikva uh, charter school and the costs of it, um, and they had mentioned at that meeting that it would continue to increase from 100000 to 200000 We're now looking annually over $300,000 a year. Um, is that something that has been discussed at all? No. Okay. I remember the that's, speaker who had that's come. Not when I was in attendance. Okay. The speaker who had come at that point was from Highland Park, um, who I'm sure is affected by it as well. Um, and I was just wondering because that's obviously a substantial amount. So I was just curious. All right. Okay. Anybody else? So we're on the board action, page 69. Yes. Oh, no, it's not 69, that's the old one. Okay. Uh, I want to just talk about, okay. Um, that's not where I'm at. Okay, sorry. I'll wait. Okay, are we ready? Any other questions? Oh, may we have a roll call, please? Ms. Bora? Yes. Ms. Fabiano? Um, Yes to all, recuse on myself on item PP. <laughs> Can I please fancy change that? Thanks for the reminder. I want to recuse on the same, please. Oh, so noted. For Mr. myself, G just for myself. Yourself yeah. only. Mr. Chiarella? Yes. Ms. Ratner? Thanks. Yes, I'll recuse on item PP as well for myself. Mr. Nikotinsky? Yes. Mr. Rutsky? Yes to all. Ms. Belko? Yes. Ms. Arminio? Yes. Ms. Bierman? Yes. Ms. Gerby? Yes, I will recuse for myself on item PP. Motion passes. Thank you. And Thank you. can I just make one note? Because I was trying to find it and I couldn't find it quick enough for, before we voted. But I just wanted to, to just say, because I always like to say thank you to any donations that, that come right. in. That's what I was looking for. So I was for. trying to find it. It's double J. Yes. Uh, Cranberry Station Gallery donated $6,500 to the art program mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. summer, which is a very generous gift. And I think KK, answer, to answer the question of the public 
that's the tax payment schedule that comes to us from the, towns. the township. Mm -hmm. So just I just noticed those two things. It's, Thank you. It's, Thank it's you. A, when we receive the funds from the taxpayers. Right. Thank you. Thank um, you. It is recommended the Board of Education approve the following board action items by a roll call of a nine member vote. It's items SS through YY. Motion. Second. Any questions, comments? Just a quick comment to follow up on Mr. Ruxky's uh, thinking of the donations. I did want to recognize both the Woodland Millick PTO for the future author visit, as well as the donation of books from the Justi Justice for Corey Foundation. Uh, ditto that. That's what I was looking for on the last vote. And I, I do want to thank everyone who generously donates uh, their funds to this school, uh, to the district, but as well as all of their time, because that's important as well. Thank you. Anybody else? May we have a roll call, please? Ms. Bora? Yes. Ms. Arminio? Yes. Mr. Nikotinsky? Yes. Ms. Belko? Yes. Ms. Fabiano? Yes. Ms. Ratner? Yes. Mr. Chiarella? Yes. Ms. Beerman? Yes. And Ms. Kirby? Yes. Motion passed. Before I turn it over to Ms. Kirby, I just want to also say that um, it is an absolute pleasure to be participatory in the events that acknowledge the children, because that's what we're here about. And uh, they are great, and they, and they definitely appreciate it. So thank you very much for this evening. OK, our next item is our board president's report. Um, I want to again congratulate all of our staff who were honored here tonight and wish them well in their retirement. I also want to congratulate all of our students we honored here tonight for their achievements. Each year our list of students we recognize grows, which is a great indication that we as a district are setting the stage for the, these achievements to be attained. Thank you to our staff, coaches, teachers, advisors, and everyone in the district who have helped these students excel. We are a little over a week away from the end of the school year. I want to congratulate and thank our students, staff, administration, and everyone who had a part in making this a su successful school year. As school began in September, there was a mask mandate that was very controversial. We had COVID restrictions in place, and we had strict COVID quarantine rules. There was a lot of discussion, debate, and compromise that took place among all the stakeholders that led to Monroe opening its schools for full day instruction and remaining open all year. We are one of the few districts that went the extra step and provided remote instruction or live streaming into our classrooms for students on quarantine. As COVID numbers decreased and the mask mandates expired, we allowed our students and staff to decide if they wanted to continue wearing a mask or not. Monroe was lucky that we never had to go remote for weeks because our COVID numbers were too high. And that I truly believe is because of everyone's diligent efforts. Dr. Lehman, thank you for all you have done to keep the district and the community informed of the ever-changing world of the COVID guidelines and keeping us informed each week with the numbers. I want to take a moment and thank Mrs. Chanley, who stepped into this role as acting superintendent during a time with so much uncertainty due to COVID. You have led this district and in the last seven months have done more than we've seen done in the last seven years. The board tasked you with doing an organizational scan and making recommendations to meet the needs of the district. Not only was this done, but it has created a district where the departments are more balanced and aligned in a way where the entire district will benefit. Your advanced knowledge of our district is such an asset to having you in this role, and I want to thank you for all you do. It hasn't been easy to sit here month after month and be personally attacked, and we recognize that, which leads me to my next part of my report. The New Jersey Department of Education Office of Fiscal Accountability and Compliance met with Mrs. Chanley, myself, and Mr. Gagliardi in early May to discuss the middle school yearbook with respect to the doctor's de designation in front of Mrs. Chanley's name. I sent the board the report that was issued, and tonight it will be presented to the public as required. Mr. Gagliardi, I'd like to turn it over to you to now explain the report. Uh, thank you, Madam President. So um, the uh, board and members of the public may recall that when the board sought the permission of the executive county superintendent to have uh, Mr. Shanley serve as acting superintendent, members of the public brought to the attention of the county office the fact that there were, for a period of um, five years, um, a designation of doctor in front of Mrs. Shanley's name um, when she had not earned the degree, um, and she was serving as the middle school principal, so it was in the middle school yearbook. 
The county office investigated that and to their satisfaction found no wrongdoing and allowed the board to go forward with naming Mrs. Shanley as acting superintendent and approve her contract. Um, in recent weeks, uh, members of the public uh, made the same complaint that they had made to the county office, to the Department of Education in Trenton, and to the governor's office. And that led to a referral to the um, Office of Fiscal Accountability and Compliance, which uh, again was going to do an investigation. And so approximately one month ago, we were contacted by the Office of Fiscal Accountability and Compliance, OFAC, and they asked for documentation. It was the same documentation we had submitted to the county office, and they asked for an opportunity to do an interview. So they wanted to interview Mrs. Shanley. She was given the opportunity to have her own personal counsel participate. She declined that, uh, but the uh, OFAC uh, officials allowed um, the board president and myself to participate as witnesses, essentially, to the conversation. I wasn't asked any questions, and neither was the board president. So for approximately 30 minutes or so, uh, Ms. Shanley submitted to an investigate, to a, a series of questions without counsel, and that led to um, the uh, report that was issued on May 19th. So I'm going to uh, read a, a large portion of the report, without, that, that's not as threatening as it sounds, the uh, report is a little more than a page. Um, and consistent with the requirements in the uh, New Jersey Administrative Code, which looks like statutes, but it's not, um, this will be posted on the district's website for at least the next 30 days. Um, I, I am going to eliminate the various legal citations because that will just prolong this experience, but they will be in the material that the public sees and that the board has already seen. Um, the New Jersey Department of Education Office of Fiscal Accountability and Compliance received information concerning the current Monroe Township School District Acting Superintendent Shari Shanley with respect to appending the doctor designation in front of Ms. Shanley's name within school yearbooks without having earned the title. Uh, then there's a cite to a legal citation um, that um, requires a state, uh, or rather school officials to only use uh, titles that are um, appropriately designated. The OFACT review confirmed the title doctor was placed before Ms. Shanley's name while she was principal of the Monroe Township Middle School, appearing in the school's yearbooks over a five-year period. The title first appeared before Ms. Shanley's name in the 2012-13 yearbook and continued up to and including the 2016-17 yearbook. There was no evidence disclosed which confirmed the use of the title beyond those years or included on any other district documents bearing her name. Nor was there evidence Ms. Shanley received an enhanced salary by the appendage of the title. Ms. Shanley did confirm that although she is diligently working toward a Doctor of Education degree, that degree has not yet been confirmed. Ms. Shanley stated the title was appended in the 2012-13 yearbook in anticipation of having received the degree by the time the yearbook was issued. However, the degree was not conferred during that time, and due to yearly oversights, the title remained dependent to her name up to and including the 16-17 yearbook. Although the board, prior to this time, was made aware of the improper use of the title and has internally corrected the matter, the board is directed to submit a corrective action plan identifying the procedures it will develop and implement to ensure compliance with the provisions of statute throughout the district and is to provide a copy of this report to each member of the board for review. Um, then there's a citation to the section of the administrative code requiring that this be presented publicly within 30 days of the issuance of the report, stated May 19, so we've done that, to put it on the district website, and to submit to the board for approval a corrective action plan within 30 days. Your next meeting is July 20th, that's more than the 30 days. We sought and received an extension confirmed in writing that will allow you to finish uh, dealing with this at your July meeting. And then a copy of the resolution and the corrective action plan must be sent to the Department of Education's OFAC office within 10 days of its adoption, um, and it's something that uh, I can certainly handle. Um, and then that corrective action plan would also be added to the district's website in addition to or in lieu of this, because this will have been on by, uh, by at least 30 days at that time. Um, uh, I think the corrective action plan and the uh, attendant resolution are going to be very simple. So they'll be submitted to the board well in advance of your July meeting in case there are any questions. It's my expectation 
uh, that the corrective action plan, which will be even briefer than this letter, uh, will be considered by the board and you will be required to take action at that time and then we'll make sure that this is submitted to the Department of Education and that will conclude this third investigation about the um, middle school yearbooks. Hmm. Okay. Unless the board members have any questions, I yield to the president. So I have a question. Um, so the corrective action plan is so that this does not happen in the future? Correct. Okay. Thank Throughout you. the district. Anybody else have any questions? No? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gagliardi. That concludes my report. Thank we'll you, Madam go President. go on to our next. Oh, Mr. Chirella? I have one of the other board Oh, board yes. Uh, we're gonna you just want to be first. Other board business. <laughs> other board business, Mr. Chiarella. All right. I just want to thank uh, or congratulate our, our uh, retirees and our award winners. So I think they did a, an excellent job, and it was nice to be able to uh, take part in that. Um, I, I do have a, a, just a couple questions. I had re requested that Ohm Parikh uh, be recognized mm -hmm. at the graduation, that his name be read. And then we had another student who had passed away as well. Um, just that we're that that we have an open seat and that we recognize you know read their names off and I just want to make sure that that's happening. Go ahead. Okay, no, you go. All right, I'll, I'll I'll keep I'll get all I my questions out and then I'll. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maybe I'll I hope I, you know I hope when when, uh, when we first started to go to Trenton for our graduation, uh, I, I thought it you know I thought it was a, a bit much, but I understood there were rainstorms, there were things going on that that. That they, and then we, they wanted to make sure that we had graduations that were storm free, and I and I get that. But now, last year, our prior superintendent and our business administrator and the board got rid of busing to Trenton, so the kids are not being bused to graduation. They're driving on their own, which could lead to accidents and things like that. I don't know if anybody's watching the news, but there's all kinds of crime going on in our inner cities, and Trenton's an inner city. So I would hate to think that our, uh, you know, any of our kids could be put in harm's way or have an accident or something like that. Uh, I think that if we're gonna if we're gonna stick with getting rid of busing, then we need to bring our graduation back here to Monroe, where we'll save ten to fifteen thousand dollars a year, and we'll have it here where everybody can take part and not have to worry about their kids driving all the way to Trenton. And that's it. Thanks. Just two. That's it. Okay. I, I forgot the first question. Already. Uh, um, um, okay. Um, it was a joke. It was a joke. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I think we could use a little levity right now. Um, so, um, so um, I, um, and everybody knows that I'm very close with the parents, so I went ahead and I spoke with Dr. Higgins and he had made some other suggestions and then I went back directly to the family. They happened to give a scholarship, so they were actually at the scholarship night, which was fantastic, and then I was waiting. I said, you know what, don't answer me now, consider what you feel is best, what you want to work for you. So Yasha Shui, who's the daughter, who she texts me regularly, they discussed it as a family and they have decided that they would like to be in attendance, so we will make sure they get tickets and they would like to have the name read at an empty seat and nothing more. Or nobody would be coming up or anything. So I shared it with Dr. Higgins and he said, yes, Mrs. Janley. So it is happening. The other child who sadly also lost his life, the parents have exclusively made the statement they want nothing. They don't want their child's name mentioned, they don't want an empty seat. So I think moving forward, that's the right way to go. Okay. Um, with regards to your next question, I couldn't agree more. I happened, I happened to be at the last pouring, downpour situation. Um, and we used to do the middle school graduation on, on the, um, on the football field as well. So I will let you know that I did reach out to uh, Mr. Tate just to have this question. It was always told to me by, pre, by the administration that you couldn't put the chairs on the, at the time it was new. How funny is that? Because now we're getting a new one again, but at the time it was new. Um, and the answer is that is not correct as long as we use appropriate chairs. Um, so now what I would like to do is I'd like to entertain that conversation if you can give me the time, um, whatever time I have, um, to go ahead and look into what that would look like. Number one, A, can we break the contract because the contract's already been signed. B, I couldn't agree more because not only is it in a city, but it doesn't go back to Middlesex County funding because it's Mercer County. We don't even take care of our own because it's not in Middlesex County, it's in Mercer County track. Um, and then the third thing is, if we were to bring it back here, we'd have to have a rain date. I totally agree. What does it look like? And the issue that we have now at hand, because Mr. Tate is doing a great job making sure, because I know you got to touch the grass, we were all excited. Um, when that's done, what about the bleachers? So we already started to have the conversation about the cost of the bleachers. I'm gonna make the statement since it's watched publicly. Is, is the township willing to spend any money with us on teachers? I don't know, I'm always out for trying to get money. Um, I don't know what it looks like because that would be our only other concern is are the bleachers in proper condition to have all of our family sit? So um, I hear you, I agree with you. I think it would be fabulous to have it here. There's something to be said about marching onto the football field with music and so forth. I think it really has that pomp and circumstance that we love. Um, so I'll be happy to look into that for you. Great, thank you. 
Mrs. Bierman. Are you, are you staying on that topic? Oh, no. Okay. I'd like to congratulate the approval of the personnel appointments of the new principals, Mr. Sidler at Brookside, and welcome Ms. Ackerman Garcia at Mill Lake, and to Ms. McLeod in her new role as the supervisor of elementary curriculum and instruction. Yeah. I think they deserve that. We kind of <laughs> glossed over that. It was in there, you know. <laughs> I would also like to express my appreciation and continued support for the work of our acting superintendent beyond the day-to-day, -day, the progression of the referendum at a dormancy, the support for interim stopgap projects and expediency in addressing the opportunities, the analysis and action to the organizational chart and making thoughtful and needed changes leadership in the budget process and making the tough decisions to manage the wish list of spending into manageable priorities with the anticipated revenue collaboration tireless enthusiasm backed up with intelligence wit and a backbone to carry on amid any adversity she puts the children and the quality of the resources available to them at the forefront emails get answered phone calls get returned answers if not known are sought out and provided day and night every day of the week. She is always open to hearing any dissent and making consideration of it. She is not accepting an environment of stagnancy based on just facilitating everything the way it has always been done. I have witnessed nothing but an endless energy and capacity to understand, learn, and absorb everything that comes in front of her so she can be the key pivot person for needed decisions and still encompass all areas of input. Mrs. Chanley, I thank you. Mrs. Ratner? Yep. Um, so first thing I just wanted to clarify, because I know a member um, had brought up the concerns with the pit workers for space, and I just want to um, explain that it was a complete, it was a misunderstanding, I'm hoping, um, and not an intentional dig, because I wanted to explain my intention was to make sure that the special education services would be continue, continued, um, just because there has been occasions when there are courses that take place in the auditorium that then have to be canceled because of programs that would come in where there are speakers or it takes up the entire auditorium. Um, and I had personally been affected by that when I was teaching. And the last thing I want to do is to have any of these students not be getting the services that are required and that obviously help them. My mother has been a special education teacher for 20 years. I have a great respect for all of those who advocate and who teach uh, special education. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, I wanted to congratulate all of our graduates and um, the parents of the graduates. I know that there's a few board members who have um, graduates um, from the high school as well as obviously middle and elementary school. Um, thank you to all the teachers and administration who have supported them throughout this year and all the other years. Um, I specifically wanted to thank um, Mrs. McTernan who um, has just announced her retirement. Um, she actually happens to be my daughter's fifth grade teacher this year. I sort of feel like whenever my daughter's in a class, that teacher retires, so I'm starting to wonder. But um, she really has installed a love of reading for my daughter, and so I really thank her for that. She's probably no longer here because it's late, but I just wanted to say that. Um, in addition, and again, both of these schools are on my side of town, so again, I don't know what to say about that, but congratulations to Ms. McLeod. Um, on her new position. Um, she, I've had a wonderful experience with her as my daughter's current principal, um, and I look forward to the entire district benefiting from her expertise. And um, you know, I'm certainly sad to see Ms. McNally resigning, although I know she's doing what's best for her family. Um, she has such a spunk about her that really just got kids so excited about coming to school and with two little ones that will be attending Mill Lake soon. You know, it's sad to see her go, but again, I do wish her all the best. Um, I was really excited to see our students recognized tonight. I just quickly want to recognize, realizing that we had recognized most of our musicians back in March, I think it was, or April. Um, but last week, our seventh and eighth grade band um, went to Hershey, yeah, Hershey Park, um, and they actually received extremely high ratings at their competition, so I want to congratulate them, um, as well as um, Mr. Snyder on his performance, the world premiere tomorrow, that really is an, an outstanding feat that not a lot of districts have. Um, and so then, finally, I just wanted to ask about two things. One I had m wanted to mention earlier um, was just, I was curious if we will be revisiting any of the virtual home instruction policies for COVID 
for the next school year, just because, again, that has been a very large expense and you know, the list hasn't really gone down given what's happened. Hopefully it will go down again, but obviously there was that uptick. And then also I just wanted to follow up on um, something that Ms. Borat actually had brought up last month, I believe, at the BG&T meeting, which was an energy audit. And I know during the school year, obviously, things are so busy, sometimes there's not a moment to breathe in the day to day. But I was wondering if that's something perhaps over the summer that you know, might be able to be looked into or at least initiated into how to go forward with that. Thank you. So regarding the home instruction piece, uh, and all of our COVID policies, procedures, more, more or less procedures, um, we will take our lead by obviously any guidance from the state, that's you know, in the health department. But I would envision, based on our trajectory right now, that we would take another look at our home instruction 100%. Um, we have to, again, we're gonna, I'm not gonna say what I think maybe the direction we're gonna head in. I have some ideas, we need to talk it through. Um, we need to see if it would align with, because again, everything is grounded in our guidance. But certainly I think if I, if I could project where we're gonna go, I think home instruction would look totally different next year uh, relating to COVID, assuming the trajectory of COVID is heading in, in the direction it's heading. Um, but yes, I anticipate, I would anticipate some changes. All right, thank yep. you. Okay, Mr. Rutsky. If I could piggyback on Ken's commentary about graduation, because I can tell you, I had no idea we're not busing kids to graduation anymore. So if this is a concern and we're talking safety, is it not possible for us to grab some buses and send the seniors up to Trenton, down to Trenton? Like, I don't know when that decision was made, but if we're concerned about it, it we have a week and a half to maybe find a few bus drivers and I agree with you. and I had COVID during the you know like this time last year so I don't know if I missed it or what but but I can tell you I when I when I realized it I was I was stunned because it wasn't anything that was even on my radar and usually parents will come to me and say what's going on you know what are you what are you guys doing yeah I, years ago I remember driving next to buses full of kids like, oh, yeah. so I just just assume that's what we still do so if we don't do it and we're scared or worried can we consider doing it in the course of 10 days it just just a thought so this is what I will say, based upon your question. Probably tonight, I'll write an email and let me see what we can do. All I can do is reach out to the Director of Transportation, follow up through the business office, um, and just confirm, number one, do we have drivers? Mm -hmm. And if we have drivers and buses, how, um, would we just be kind of like, you know, first come, first serve, for lack of a better term? You know, right. if you pull up in front of the high school, you have to be here X amount of time. And the other thing is the financial consideration. So we'd have to look and see from a budgetary stance, if the money is there, and perhaps it is, because I know that we've had various different allot allotments, like even for our home instruction, came through some funding, correct, that we talked about. So I don't know the answer, but I would be happy to ask, that, to ask those questions and literally find out by tomorrow morning that if possible. Great. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Paul. And I guess just to follow up on that, would we, so the way the busing worked in previous years, the students were required to take the bus. They were not allowed to go by means of their parents or by um, their own means there. And I know there was debate a long time ago about that because if you get a very hot day, there's no air conditioning, they're wearing, um, you know, the, the boys are asked to wear button down shirts and, and maybe a jacket and then the gown on top of it gets very hot the buses are idling outside of the arena. Um, parents have complained that their children get sick on the bus and, and it was a requirement. So if we, if we could look at, could it be something where it's optional for them? I would say because, and like this was before me, so, and I wasn't in high school, so I did participate. Um, I'm going to say that since we currently have no buses, I think it would actually be even more financially and realistic to say optional. Because I know just from doing buses, this 56 passenger, our buses are 56 passenger, we have approximately 600 children. So that means that we need, you know, 10 buses oh, right. at, at 10, 12, right? Buses at a minimum. Yeah. So if right. the. If, if every kid takes right, the so bus. I would like to be able to say um, optional. Pick a number. And I don't even know if it could be done. But yeah. I, don't, I don't like to say no because if it could be done, why should I look? Let's right. see if it could right. be done. For the record, it says 88 and uh, chance of rain next Friday. So they may be sweating. <laughs> you would know as a parent. And I, I would just, think that I just, the only reason I picked up my phone was to check the weather out. Yeah. If possible. Right. <coughs> but I do agree about children driving themselves. I guess that was a question I had. And again, I, this is before me. Before me, um, If there are parents, because you mentioned all kids had to take the bus in the past. I know 
a lot of times after graduations, families would go out with the parents, then just come back here, or, or the child would then meet with the rest of their family after their graduation, after they returned back. Is well, it was, was a requirement that you had to take it there, and then once you graduated, we didn't provide transportation back. Oh, okay, so it's one-way transportation. Yes. I just, I just want to add to the conversation that um, Project Graduation used to do the, um, the boat trip, and it was very well attended. So most of the kids would just get on those coach buses and go up to, where is it, Weehawken or something, and they would get on the Project Graduation, and they'd be out till 3, 4 in the morning, you know, out in the New York Harbor, doing all that kind of stuff. My I, my son went, so I can tell you, it, he had a blast and, you know, had a good time. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what they're doing this year, but I hope they're having a good time. They are. Oh, cool. Yes. Miss Bora. Changing tracks from graduation. I just wanted to take a minute to thank every single staff member, support staff member, custodian, central office administration for this past year. Um, we tend to forget as parents on most days that we're in the new normal, but I don't think our staff, custodians, and administration have had a moment to forget that. They're still living and dealing with the new normal in their, you know, very boxed ways, and it's not been an easy year, but you guys have made it seem so easy for our children and for the parents, and being a parent of three children in the district myself, I would like to take this moment to thank every single you know, staff members, custodian, everybody that has worked to make this such a normal, new normal year for all of our children. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank well you. Ms. Belko. Uh, yes, I just want to um, piggyback on what Ms. Bora said. I think we, we need to make sure that we, you know, appreciate the staff. So I just want to add the group of, of volunteers and students that come here every month to and I know the students wind up leaving because it gets to be 10 o'clock and you know school starts pretty early in the morning so um, but and the staff winds up here um, with us until the wee hours of the morning so I appreciate all that you do so that we can be as transparent as possible with our with our board meetings and have everything out there um, I do also want to comment about all of the celebrations that we do we do we have all the presentations um, the last couple of months we've had several and I want to congratulate all the seniors um, for getting to this point the the and I when I say all the seniors I I mean all of them I I don't mean the ones that we just give certificates to here um, at the board I mean those that um, maybe they didn't participate in sports or clubs or had you know huge social circles there's a lot of kids that are out there young adults who you know they have small social circles but they 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 get through and they go and they do the schoolwork and they deserve as much praise and as much um you know respect for getting this far and being able to get through this this is the first like real class that came back for a full year they've had a real good year um you know, um, my daughter's gonna be here with me tomorrow for an event that I have, I, I have to be here for. And she said to me tonight, mom, it's gonna be the first time I've been in the school since March of 2020. And every hair on my body just stood up because that just sent a chill through my spine because she was in the senior class of 2020. And um, she didn't attend any of the graduation activities that they did have outside. She just didn't, she was just that you know, distressed. So um, I just want to say to this, this, this graduating class and any graduating class, go out there, enjoy yourself. I will be there with you on the 24th, um, cheering you all on because this has been an incredible high school journey for you and it'll, it'll shape the rest of your lives. So good luck and, and um, I'll see you next week. Thank you. Ms. Arminio. Well, I'm not going to take uh, the time to say what my colleagues have said so eloquently. So again, I would just like to reiterate and thank them for their beautiful words. And I, I, uh, I definitely uh, thank, you know, want people to know that I feel the same way. So thanks to all of the district and the people in here. But I, and I hate to go down this road, but I, can, I cannot remain silent. Um, I, uh, for all the years that I have been here, I have uh, promoted transparency and collaboration with the uh, public, and I am very disappointed uh, that we are not uh, responding to our public. Um, tonight we, 
uh, you know, during our public sessions. I know it is not required, and it is, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we have even been advised by our, uh, our legal teams uh, not to. However, I think we're better than that. I always have. I think we've worked very hard to be open and, uh, you know, there, there were criticisms of other administrations when they didn't answer questions that the public brought at, at the podium. Uh, I know it has been a very harsh time, and I want to say that I disagree with the public vitriol, and I don't condone any of the tenure of the comments or the disinformation. However, I do believe that the public is part of our district, even those who are angry with us. And you may be correct, uh, Ms. Shanley, that there's only a few limited numbers of people who continually berate uh, the efforts of this board and and personally, um, you know, to say terrible things on, on a personal level. I don't like that. I don't think it's correct. However, I have to say that we cannot uh, address and uh, provide information for some district uh, members and, and not others. So I, I would like to go back to participating with our public after all, we just received our tax payment schedule, and from the public, we get $122,337,000. Mil, uh, uh, nope, am I saying that wrong? $122,337,704 for that. And I, I, I just think, I mean, we have in this country, it's a democracy. Sometimes uh, democracy is cumbersome. And I just hope that we, we try to treat everybody equally, even though they, they mistreat us. I think it would show um, the, the kind of character we have on this board, which I think is very high. And you know, I thank Ms. Spearman for her comment. However, I you know, respectfully disagree. Uh, and I think we should be very cognizant of how we treat, we treat the public, even when they don't treat us similarly. But again, uh, I want to leave on a good note. Thanks, everybody, for a wonderful job. And Ms. Shanley, you did a great job since, uh, since November. And I appreciate that, uh, your enthusiasm. And I wish all of our graduating children from all of the different grades that they're, that they're graduating from a good, uh, and, and congratulations and a good summer to everyone. And thanks, our staff. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. And I just want to um, address what you've said. Um, you know, our public forum is the time for the public to come and to uh, give comments to us. It is not a time of a question answer period. Um, it should not be a time where we are attacked with disinformation continuously. And as I've stated, when the public does come up with questions, um, we have tried to answer them, and I know when we don't, um, there is an attempt to go back and find the answers and reach back out. Um, well, what I will not entertain is continuous um, lies and misinformation and questions that really are not, do not pertain to our school district, but are on a, pu a private level. And, and it's really not, it, it, it does not foster anything here in Monroe Township that is for our children or for the betterment of education. Oh. So we, that, as I said, I have been advised by um, our New Jersey School Board's representative, um, our legal counsel. Um, I know many other districts set time limits. We don't do that for public forum. Um, I've been advised that we should not entertain a back and forth dialogue question answer period because we, you know, as it is right now, it's 1030 and we're still not through our agenda and it elongates the meeting and it turns into a back and forth fighting and, and that's not what public forum is meant to do. So I apologize if you are unhappy at how I handle public forum, but I think I am trying to do the best that I can um, under the guidance that I've been given um, and representing um, what I've heard from board members as well, how they would like me to conduct public forum as well. So I, I well, do take it into consideration um, and hopefully we can move along better and have um, you know, questions answered um, 
that are appropriate. Well, first Thank of you. all, it wasn't personal. It was, it was what my comments are, are, are you know, my ability uh, to express myself as a board member. I have one vote, that's fine. If I'm outvoted by uh, the rest of the board members, that's fine. However, I felt, and again, it's sort of the same thing. I made a comment, that is my position. I didn't think it needed to be detracted from from anything. That was my my thing, and I and again, I believe we are in my own position. I believe it's better. It has nothing to do with how you handle things. It has to do with how I think, uh, as a board member, I would like to see our openness in in public. That doesn't mean it's going to change. That there's more than one. I'm only one person and one vote, but um, I you know. It had nothing to do with you personally. Thank you. Can I make Board? a comment, um, sure. Mr. President? Um, I just have an observation I, um, to what Michelle said about answering some people and not answering. I know we changed the way we do this in, in a f last few meetings, and it's been going very well. I think there was a little misstep today, and it could be, and this is my observation, um, one of the gentlemen came after a few meetings and probably was not aware of the change in the rule and he kept waiting for an answer and we thought that was the only answer he wanted. So you answered that but then he kept asking yes. follow-up questions. I think that is what stood out tonight to me as a board member that he he got that opportunity to do, to do that whereas we've stopped doing that with the rest of the public. It, it was not intentional on your part or anybody's is what my observation is. I meant to talk to you after the meeting and point out that. that uh, and I and I did ask that gentleman if that was his que only question. You did, you did, and yes. then, but then we didn't stop him after that because he kept running with his question. We could have, and he would have understood. But I understand that not everything goes the way we. And and it, it was that one. Uh, what have you, you know, one fluke that in, in tonight's meeting, and I observed the same, which and I kind of felt awkward about it myself. Um, but I think besides that, I have to maintain that I have seen a great effort from your side, and I am appreciative of it. I do understand where Michelle is coming from, and I want to support that as well, that no matter how we are being treated by the public, if we can maintain the standard we would expect ourselves to be treated with, then we are doing right as a board. So thank you for taking it and dealing with it and doing the best with it. Thank, thank you. you. All right, anybody else? All right, the next item on the agenda is our public forum. Anybody wishing to speak has four minutes. State your name and address for the record. Brian Fabiano, 19 Patricia Place. I, I, I think what Michelle might, might have been trying to say, and I'm not putting words in her mouth, but kind of feels from the audience, what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. And the fact is, Members of this board, you, Mrs. Scurby, fought up here for years to be able to have an questions answered at the podium. You fought for the giant time clock. You fought for the, the time clock to stop. But when people from your own supporting group, like myself, started to ask the hard questions, instantly we run the clock out and we, don't, we go back to what we all said we didn't like about how previous boards did it. So it's all perception. I have one question, and my one question is this. When the letter was sent to the county superintendent giving an update on the superintendent search, was that letter shared with members of the board prior to it being submitted? The letter was shared with our attorney and then shared with the, the question attorney. I'll ask again. Was the letter that you sent to the county superintendent with an update on the superintendent search shared with the members of the it board of education with before the board as it was required? It was shared with the board. Before or after answer. it was submitted? It was shared with the board. Okay. So did members so then if that's the case. And the discussion okay. of the Okay, what was so going I'm done. You're using my time now. The so my question then is, my question then is. You asked your question. I, okay, you um, no, your no. I, you're taking my time, and I want it reset. My question then is, did every member of this board 
approve a letter going to the county superintendent that included a tax on me, a, a spouse of a board member, and other community members. Because I can't quite understand, in seeing the letter, and I just saw it last night, someone pointed it out to me on Oprah Machine, that in an update to the county superintendent in state, that this board, all of you, because apparently you all saw it and approved it, would think it would be appropriate to attack members of the community who, who are parents in the district on an update in a, of a superintendent search that, quite honestly, what do we as a public have anything to do? If you're doing your due diligence, you're interviewing, you feel you have the best candidates, you feel Mrs. Chanley is the best candidate to move forward with as permanent, why is it necessary to let the county and, and state know about specific members of the community and their concerns? What does that have to do with your search? Why is it necessary to name me and other community members in your update letter to the, to the county? What, Mr. V Gagliardi, you, you talk about 30 years of experience in representing boards. Is that typical practice? And was my wife made aware that you were going to be attacking me in that letter? There was no attack in that letter. There were facts that were stated. Should we read the letter? Are you done with your questions? I can, Mr. Gagliardi, answer my question. If, when you're done with your I'm questions. I'm done. I'll wait. Mr. Gagliardi? Mr. Fabiano, I, I honestly don't recall the language that in the letter that you're describing as an attack on you. I, I do believe your name was mentioned in the letter, but I don't really remember the phraseology. Um, but I think I can still answer your question. So it is our understanding from the county office that on more than one occasion you have gone to the county office to talk about the board's... Correct, which is my right, <laughs> just like anybody else's. Right. No, I'm, I'm not... Just let me finish. So I'm not okay. challenging your, yeah. your right to do that. So in the context of your dialogue with the county office, um, I, I don't think it is odd that your name was mentioned. In the normal course of things, because in those 30 years, I don't recall any citizens going repeatedly to the county office to talk about the naming of acting administrators. It's not the sort of thing you see. But I say with both respect and affection, I've seen a lot of things in Monroe Township I've never seen before. And I would probably agree. But you didn't make any mention in your letter for two months the amount of time I spent promoting Sherry Chanley to the, acting, to the county superintendent and the meetings that Ms. Scurby helped me set up with the county superintendent, the meetings with the state and the 60 or so phone calls to the state commissioner's office which Ms. Scurby in November, October and November worked with me on to promote Mrs. Chanley. I stood here, I stood here at, the, at, at a meeting not too long ago and said I was Mrs. Chanley's biggest proponent. And I'm not against Mrs. Chanley from a personal perspective. I've never come up here and t attacked her personally. I've asked questions. I respect the things that she's done. I think she's done some great things as acting superintendent. But if you're gonna make mention to, to my opposition, why don't you make mention to the months that I spent fighting to get her in the position with Mrs. Scurby's help? Would you like me to respond? Sure. I, I obviously don't know anything about those meetings. You said. I don't know anything about what you just talked well, about. Well, maybe it's time we have a discussion about it, and I'm happy to do it with my lawyer and you. Thank you. Well, well I would like to Hang on a second. I, mean, I, I, I get to talk to lawyers all the time, so that's not of particular interest to me. Um, but I, I, I will say that the, the information that I conveyed earlier in, in setting up uh, the um, reason why OFAC did that investigation. Um, uh, that, that's, just hang on one second, sir. So no names um, were mentioned specifically when OFAC contacted me. And I got the first call from OFAC simply because the investigation was going to involve your chief school administrator, so they weren't certain who to call. I've dealt with the Department of Education for a long time, so they called me. In the course of that conversation is where I heard that 
um, a number of members of the community had contacted the Department of Education in Trenton and the governor's office. So um, in addition to your involvement, which you've just acknowledged, there are many citizens, some of the names I know, some I don't, but this community has achieved a sort of infamy as far as the Department of Education is concerned. And since my ethical obligation is not to any individual here but to the district, I will say this, without regard to anything you've done, most of which, of course, I don't know anything about, so this is not directed to you, it's a response to your question in terms of the contents of that letter. I think that um, there is a, a certain type of explanation and perhaps a certain defensiveness that goes along with our communications with the Department of Education because of that infamy. And what I worry about on behalf of the district, and the reason I'm happy, ha I'm happy to continue to serve you, is because I think it's very difficult for this community to attract citizens to serve on the board, to attract individuals to come to work here, to make parents proud to send their school here, if we continue to deal with the sort of things that you folks spend an awful lot of time dealing with. My sense of perspective comes, my sense of perspectives come not just from the 30 years, but of course I've, I think it's, it's fair to say I've probably been to more board meetings in my sad existence than everybody up here combined. So I have a lot to compare it to. And that is really my concern, not rooting for or against either side. I say either as if there were two, there are probably more. My concern as far as the organization is concerned is that you are mired in the unhealthy. And it, if, if you can't get good citizens to serve on a board, you can't get good administrators and teachers to come work here, you can't give parents a sense of confidence that they're sending their, their kids to a quality school district, you folks have a, a problem that goes far beyond the stuff we typically discuss here. And so to the extent in, in terms of comments or any aspect of my advocacy, it, you, you hear um, a, a certain amount of frustration. It's not directed for or against any side. I don't have a side. I, I, I didn't know you before I got here. You folks can fire me by a majority vote whether you approve my contract tonight or not. But while I'm here, what I worry about is the health of this school district. And just like doctors sometimes find patients with problems that can't be diagnosed and <clears throat> rewarding to address, that's the way I feel. And if, if we can do something about that, I think you will all be better off. And the reward will come with the quality of the people you attract and the positivity rather than the negativity that you see reflected in the public discourse. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? <clears throat> George Gunkelman, Five County Court. Um, you'll probably recognize my questions because they're the same ones I brought up earlier and were never answered. But before I get back to my questions, I'd like to add one thing. I appreciate the, the, the comments from the, the board attorney. I think it's constructive if we can uh, learn from him. But it goes one step farther than what he said. We've got a referendum next, uh, less than a year away. And if this is how we come across to the voting public of Monroe, we don't have a hope in hell of getting, we can sit here and talk all we want about how good it is and how we want to do everything for our students and, and pat ourselves on the back for how much we've done in the last year or whatever. But if we can't come together and be civil and put forward what it is we intend to do with this referendum in a manner that will gain the support of the community, we will have let everybody down that we just claimed we were here to serve. And I don't know how that happens, but it's not the way it's been happening, because that doesn't work. And the, the impression, particularly in the senior community, is that there's chaos here. And we have to figure out how to get past it. In the meantime, I, I was serious when I asked what the cost of school security is. If nobody can tell me that tonight, tell me when you will tell me, and I will 
would get that information then. Um, I asked, where the source of the money of these grants were. Can someone answer that question? You want yes, Mr. Dr. Lehman. So that is federal funding. Federal funding. Yep, and IDEA stands for Individuals with Disabilities Act. So this is one-time COVID money? Nope, no. nope. This is an annual allotment. And okay. this, this, this motion was to accept the funds, expenditures of the funds would then have a follow-up um, appropriation that would run through the board. Uh, the title funds, the ESSA funds that you, were, that you referenced right below that, right. Um, they each have a specific um, kind of category in which they're intended to address. Um, and again, those are federal funds. Um, and they range everything from supporting our students uh, in low-income families to our ELL learners, um, and that's what the, the different tiers of that funding is. Those ones, if we run a, an ESL parent night, in English as a second language parent night, we would appropriate the funds through uh, identifying staff and the rate that they would get paid and things like that. So this was to accept funds, and then the, the appropriations will be in a future motion, movement, you know, approval through the board process. Okay. And these are annual? Yes, and they're, they, vary, they vary every year. Um, and it's based on our enrollment. Significant, significantly or like 10% or less? Yeah, probably 10% here and there. Um, it would, they're a function of our student enrollment. So if we were one year to have some crazy uh, sure. slide in a Understood. certain demographic, we would get a change. But, you know, subtle changes here and there. 10% ten, 10 is probably a solid number. Okay. We don't count on these funds every year either. We plan to not have them. When, when we get them, we then make a choice on how to spend it. So we don't, we don't count on this because it's not something, you know, we get it, but we don't know what it's gonna be every year. So we do, these numbers were just released in the past three, four weeks, and that's why they're here to be approved. Um, and therefore, then will be applied to the next budget year? There, therefore, this year, okay. this coming year. This coming year. Yep. Okay. The, the other question I asked earlier is uh, tax payment schedule. What do we pay? How much? Who to? We're not paying. That's I apologize. That's the township's tax schedule of how they pay us. Item KK on page seventy-six. Ta tax. It's the previously submitted tax payment schedule. Tax payment schedule that the tax that the municipality gives to the school district. We don't pay them. They pay us. May I give us? Please. Thank you. That's up. Okay. And it was previously submitted by whom? Township. The township. The township. Those are all your tax. Thank you. All right. The, the way it's worded, it sounds like it's something we're paying. Right. And, you know, I'm just trying to figure out what's happening here. Um, I had asked about. Um, if there's a breakdown of line items in the expenditures of the three million five hundred and fifty nine thousand five hundred dollars, is that something I can get at some point in the future? It was probably in last month's finance meeting, I think. Yeah, Karen. Karen, did you want to speak on it? Sure. I don't need the paper. I just need an answer. It's on. It's. It's the leases, it's for buses mostly, and there's a HVAC unit in the um, middle school that eats up a lot of that money. But Thank you, and it's right there in the agenda. Security, cameras, computer equipment, copiers, the HVAC replacement, and buses. So it's the larger ticket items we purchase in, on a lease purchasing, so we're not paying. I, for I would like to see a breakout and, and know it's what the one. idea is, how much, it's on the agenda. how much can be transferred from one line item to another. I used to work for the, work for the World Bank, I was a loan officer. And uh, I'm not used to seeing this kind of vagueness right. in budgets or, or so discussion of finance. 
So the security cameras, it's $43,485. For the computer equipment, it's $681,430. For the copiers, it's $142,897. For the HVAC replacement at the middle school, it's $1,680,000. And for the six buses and two vans, it's $841,600. That's a total of $3,389,412. And then they bundle in a 5% purchase order inflation contingency, bringing it to that 3559500 number that you see on the agenda. Okay, thank you. And that was reviewed in detail during the finance committee meeting. So if you view those meetings, you'll get sort of a deeper detail of the agenda items that are kind of the most prominent. And we kind of also try to pick out the ones that would be of most interest to the public and dive a little deeper, more specific in those committee meetings. When we're in this meeting, it's a little bit more broad-based because it's really meant to approve the things that came bubbled up out of committee. So there's a trail there, just a matter of trying to wrap arms around it. Yeah, I, I would find those kind of specifics a lot more list, useful than the listing of all the employees who's gonna, whose contracts are being renewed. I got a, about a pound of it here. Okay. That's a requirement by law to list all of those on okay. the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Betty Severito to Barrymore Drive. Um, it's the end of the school year and I wanted to thank our administrators and all of you for all of your time. I personally believe this has been a very challenging year because we're now trying to get all of our students and staff back into what real full-time school was. Um, I also wanted to say as a CPAC leader, a lot of times I'm told, oh, it's always about special education and my answer is always, the problem is it's never about special education, but it was this year and that's thanks to Dr. Lehman Mrs. Chanley and a lot of their staff and the board for supporting a lot of the special education things that have come forward. Um, so I really appreciate that. As a parent and as a leader, you're, you're making advocating much easier. I also wanted to give kudos to some of the staff that have really brought special education a long way this year, which is um, obviously Coach Dillon, who is going to be you know, a really big loss for this district, Mr. Snyder. I have to give kudos to Mrs. Matroke, who is a self-contained teacher at Brookside and my son's teacher and her team, um, especially Ms. Hanlon, who's a speech pathologist, uh, Ms. Way, who's one of the occupational therapists. The work they do every day is immeasurable. It's just making such life changes and giving a better quality of life. So Mrs. Matroke, if you're listening, thank you so much. Um, you, you're really fantastic. I, I can't stress that enough. I want to give thanks also to Mr. Billy Jacato because he has been instrumental in helping me address a lot of the challenges that we've had at Brookside School. I also work with him at Woodland, so he's been really great. Mrs. McLeod at Woodland, thank you because I have children at two schools, one at Brookside, one at Woodland. Um, congratulations on your new position. That's been outstanding. And I also want to give kudos to um, my son's teachers, Mr. Reinhold and Ms. Triani, who have been um, really incredible this year. It's been a very challenging year in education. So to all of our staff, thank you. And to every single board member, every last one of you, you were all put in there. Thank you for your service. Dr. Lehman, Mrs. Chanley, I, I can't thank you enough for really supporting CPAG this year. I hope everybody has um, a wonderful summer. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah Z's 3 Lancelot Drive. I have a copy of former acting superintendent Robert Goodall's contract. It includes an end date. It mentions the word consideration. It requires an evaluation, um, unlike Ms. Chanley's contract. And there's no uh, excuse for not establishing district goals. That said, on, on May 13th, the, the, uh, the board sent, uh, on May th the, in the May 13th letter to the board granting the extension of Ms. Shanley's contract, the Commissioner of Education said that the state, quote unquote, may grant approval for a non-certificated staff member to serve as district superintendent for up to three months at a time, end quote. Please note that the commissioner appears to consider Ms. Chanley to be quote unquote non-certificate in the sense that she does not have a standard certificate. She said that she granted the first extension with the expectation that the district would have a permanent full-time superintendent in place by May 10th. <coughs> she also indicated that since she granted the first extension, several members of the public have contacted her office and the governor's office to express concerns about Ms. Chanley. The commissioner granted this extent extension subject to several conditions. Specifically for the first time in history, the commissioner of education 
application required our board to prove that it's conducting a good faith search for a qualified permanent superintendent by requiring the broad pre board president to report the status of the search to the county superintendent, Kyle Anderson, on a biweekly basis. This shows that the state does not trust the board. It is quite clear from reading this letter that the board wants, the commissioner wants the board to find another permanent superintendent besides Ms. Chanley. Otherwise, she would have enthusiastically approved this contract extension with no condition. She specifically writes, the board shall nominate and have a signed contract with a new full-time superintendent within the timeline of the NJSBA search process. It appears that the co commissioner does not consider Ms. Chanley to be a vi viable candidate for permanent superintendent because she is not certificate and therefore her contract requires reapproval every three months. It is my belief that it was the board's intention to keep extending Ms. Chanley's contract until she earned the standard school administrator certificate, at which point the board would appoint her permanent superintendent. However, the outcry from the community has stymied this plan. A newspaper article published on June 8th indicated that a lawsuit has been filed against the Monroe Township Board of Education seeking to invalidate the vote to extend Ms. Chanley's contract. The lawsuit is alleges Ms. Skirby, Mr. Schiarella, and Mr. Nikitinsky have conflicts of interest with respect to Ms. Chanley, as well as Ms. Berman. In, in addition, the lawsuit alleges that Mr. Nikotinsky is doubly conflicted because his businesses, Dot Designing and Orange Media Group, profited from the actions of Ms. Shanley when she was principal of the middle school. On June 10th, Ms. Skirby wrote a letter to Kyle Anderson updating him on the status of the board search. In this letter, Ms. Shanley said the board had narrowed its search down to five finalists, which included Ms. Shanley, but the letter said nothing about the results of the superintendent survey. Instead, it included an attack on fellow board member Katie Fabiano and her husband, Brian Fabiano, who is a private citizen. This letter stated that Mr. Fabiano was, Ms. Fabiano was too conflicted to participate in the superintendent search as long as Ms. Chanley was a viable candidate because Mr. Fabiano is a vocal critic of Ms. Chanley. The letter also defamed Mr. Fabiano when it accused him of spreading false information about Ms. Chanley on a social media page, quote unquote, run by Sarah Aziz. Given that the commissioner said that Ms. Chanley's contracts must be reapproved every three months, she cannot be a viable candidate for permanent superintendent. In my view, Ms. Fabiano is not conflicted due to her husband's actions and interestingly, Ms. Skirby never claimed that Ms. Fabiano was conflicted when her husband was advocating in favor of Ms. Chanley as recently as January 2022. But now that Mr. Fabiano appears, believes that Ms. Chanley is a poor choice for permanent superintendent, Ms. Skirby appears to, de appears to be determined to silence his wife. The June 10th letter to Mr. Anderson represents an abuse of power. Mr. Gagliori. And oh, okay. I'm just repeating the language from the commissioner. This is what the commissioner said. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware okay. of that. Okay, so the, the language, j again, uh, because I, 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 I don't want the public to get the misimpression, at least as far as Mr. and Mrs. Fabiano are concerned. That language that you read from the letter that said Mrs. Fabiano should not participate so long as Mrs. Shanley was a candidate uh, comes directly from school boards, which is handling the search. So that was not defamatory language cooked up in a secret I laboratory somewhere. I didn't somewhere. say that was a defamatory language. I was referring to the comments about Mr. Fabiano. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, let me finish. So, so that was simply a recitation of what school boards had advised the board in terms of reporting on the process. Have they advised I, about the other board members? So, um, the, neither those board members, nor anyone of which I'm aware, has found those board members to be uh, in conflict. So um, there, there's no reason to mention that. As far as the, um, the certificate issue is concerned, another issue we've covered many times. So in order for the board to have considered someone for the permanent position. And I honestly don't know who, the, who submitted applications or who the candidates are, so this is as general as it can be. In order to have that permanent certificate, you would either have to be someone who has been or is a superintendent, or has been or is an assistant superintendent. So- Or a director, right? Good grief. So all of the, <laughs> all of the uh, school districts in the state operate under the same set of rules. And so if you have someone who is either an acting superintendent or is going to be appointed superintendent who doesn't have one of those certificates, the State Department of Education <coughs> uses the phraseology substandard certificate. 
it, it, it's not a lesser certificate or a suggestion that the people are not qualified. It's just they don't have that certificate. You have to be in the position and you have to be mentored in order to achieve that certificate. And so whether someone is going to be an acting superintendent or a permanent superintendent, that's the phraseology that the Department of Education uses. And um, the, the fact that it takes time to do that, it takes about a year under I'm any I'm only referring to the language that the commissioner used. I, I, I understand what you're okay. referring to, and I'm trying to I understand. board president's direction, respond to your questions, and also to inform the public. The only other thing that I, I think uh, should be mentioned is the, the idea that this is being done in 90-day um, increments and that after you get an extension, that is the further 90 days, the board has to report on the status of the search. Absolute standard fare. And I, I don't necessarily want to reveal privileged communications, but I think the board president will acknowledge that the course of action taken by the Department of Education was specifically predicted by me because I've seen this so many times. It is very difficult to complete the search within 90 days. If you don't, you need to ask for an extension. The letter that you, you are holding up there also talks about what it was ne needed to get even a further extension. You didn't mention that. And it's the same thing. The department doesn't want to see you continually replacing the chief school administrator, but they insist that you be making progress to finding someone permanent. And so I expected the board would be asked to do that. It was asked to do that. I'm not offended or troubled by the fact that they asked for interim reports now that we're on a second extension. And I think the board would have to show good reason if it needed a further extension, but the letter you're holding up there does not forbid that either. It wants the Department of Education wants to see the board move toward a permanent superintendent, and this is standard fare. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? Good evening. Pradeep Milam, 4 Jake Place. Um, I think a particular sect of people are making this pot stirring or making our community look divided. The long term effects that the long term effects that uh, um, our board attorney has explained is already affecting and from the outside who doesn't follow this process or board meetings and committee meetings, they look the, the, the projection created by these certain people is going to be like a chaos. Like something is going on, something is cooking up, something is going to blow up, something like that. But like, what's going on? Like, so I suggest the energy that these guys are putting to call and storm into the Mr. Kyle Anderson's office or to write to the governor. I request them to do the same for more funding more funding, more funding. That's what our problem is. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, we'll close the public forum. Next item on the agenda is our closed session. Prior to doing that, we need a motion to approve a temporary board secretary for closed session. My motion. motion. Is Karen. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. okay, our closed session resolution. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Township of Monroe hereby move into closed session in accordance with the Sunshine Law, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, NJSA 10, 4-6 through 10, 4-21 to discuss the following subjects. Harassment, intimidation, and bullying matters protected by attorney-client privilege personnel matter, superintendent evaluation discussion. Following closed session, action may be taken. The discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public at such time the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Can I get a motion first? Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We're back in the uh, public session. Um, I believe we have a resolution to read. This is uh, yes. Selco. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to authorize additional audit services by our audit firm, HFA, Certified Public Accountants and Advisors, at a cost to not exceed $40,000. Second. 
Second. Motion. Second. Okay. May we have a roll call, please? Mr. Rutsky? Yes. Mr. Chiarella? Yes. Ms. Bora? Yes. Ms. Arminio? Yes. Mr. Nikotinsky? Yes. Ms. Belko? Yes. Ms. Beerman? Yes. Ms. Gerby? Yes. Ms. Fabiano is absent, no longer here, and Ms. Ratner has left for the evening. Motion passes. Great. Thank you very much. Um, our next item is a public forum. Uh, seeing nobody in the public, um, we will close the public forum. Our next scheduled Board of Education meeting is on June 21st, 2022. Um, that is a special meeting and it begins at 6.30 p.m. here at the high school. That concludes Madam, our meeting. Madam President, meeting. will we be going into closed session immediately for that one? Yes. So I mean, so the public doesn't know that it's gonna be an open meeting. We'll go into closed session, right? That's the only thing on the agenda? Aside um, from, I, well, it's I, all gonna be all closed session. It'll right? be closed session, yes. Okay. All right, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.